Let me make him kick it again. I could be an error, but I don't believe I am. It'll be declined? Yes. Well, Lumen has the ball upfield of the 33. We've been kind of throwing vinegar in the wound, they think, at this juncture of the game, but 7.20 to go. And a 21-point lead. Lumen at the road in 33 as we come to the final seven minutes. 49 yards on the block, eight yards return. Leonard's kicking with the win, though it's not blowing too hard, but he kicked that ball 49 yards. For Lumen, that's Scott Bain to be out there in the right, number 39. Ball pitch back to Lapeer. Lapeer cuts back over the middle. Lapeer is across 35 up to the 36 yard line. Lapeer, number 32, picked up three yards. Lapeer got roughly three to the 36. Number 81, uh, Tom John Sullivan, the uh, junior uh, brother of Tom, uh, now in the Christie lineup, also at an end position. Down through a touchdown pass to him. Was it last week or the week before? Van to the right. Second down, seven. Don Bellish, your quarterback. Inside handoff, that play fooled nobody. Uh, Johnson. Johnson got about a foot on that play. That play was stopped right there at the 35. Well, Muskegon Catholic coming in, surely entertaining high hopes of uh, KOing Lumen Christie, but I don't believe this is the night, my friends. They, they have scored but one time. That was in that one play that got them 65 yards out of their 90-plus yards at halftime, those stats. They haven't really tacked on too much to that here in the second half. Third eight. Play stop 32. 32 of the 33. Might have been a busted play there. Jimmy Matthews came in to get him. Tom, it looked like it might have even been a quarterback draw. I think he was starting back up into the line of scrimmage when uh, Matthews nailed him. So, so it's uh, fourth down, and Lumen will have uh, Mike Monty. The last time he went to kick, uh, well, fumbled the ball. It was recovered by Muskegon. So he's back to kick now. And Winters is the single safety back here for Muskegon back in the 40. Gets the rush and kicks, and it's partially blocked. Knocked down, and uh, the recovery will be made up around the 33. John Sullivan got a handle on that. It was partially blocked, and then in its flight, Sullivan got a handle on it. And we'll be back with more action here. Give you a few examples of the savings next week. Here's a 1984 EXP front wheel drive, four speed. Uh, TV. Today's game is being brought to you by Jackson Co-op Federal Credit Union, the West Point Lounge, John LaFear Ford, White's Chicken Little, Bob's Country Store, and the Hunt Club. Today's game is also being brought to you by these fine local sponsors. Jackson Vikings have just come out of here. In fact, the matter is they came out of the high school a few minutes ago. They have Roman will talk about that in a moment. Jackson High, Lumen Christie for the City of Jackson High School football title. The Titans were out about a half hour ago, and the Vikings just came out of the field. Pizza, please, your host in the pregame tonight. And, of course, our postgame. Uh, they've been with us during the well entire football season, which com culminates, concludes tonight. And uh, we hope you'll uh, continue through the uh, season. Better than that, through the basketball campaign, to enjoy Pizza Please at Pizza Please. And that's the place to go, my friends. 11 
uh, 31st Street in Jackson. The magic telephone number to call for home delivery, day 32651. Ed Roman, the crowd will not be what we anticipated. We were talking 7,500, 8,000 tonight. And unless they send about nine truckloads of people into the next few minutes, we won't even come close. The weather's ideal. It's uh, a crisp evening, but it's a dry evening, and it's a good one. Jackson High came storming out of that high school over there, out of one of those eggs that said about a minute ago, and as you mentioned, there's a very specific reason for that. Well, Tom, uh, I'll tell you something. Uh, it's a shame that Big Al's back weaving his magic on First Street because he's going to see a dandy game here tonight. Jackson High, definitely the underdog, coming out here tonight, uh, waiting till the last minute. We got here about 6.30. They had not been on the field. They were not in the stadium, and uh, I'm sure Tom Stobie used every minute of that time to uh, conjure up some sort of a uh, psychology uh, ploy to uh, get this ball club moving and defeat Lumen Christie. And uh, as I've told several people this week, Tom, I saw one of the better coaching jobs in high school football last week when Tom Stobie uh, worked uh, close to a miracle uh, in getting his ball club and only losing to Lansing Sexton seven to nothing. If there's anything to be gained from a loss, uh, I think uh, Tom Stobie and his staff uh, did just that last night or last week I should say against uh, Lansing Sexton on the other hand Lumen Christie uh, uh, the question has been raised uh, for the last few weeks why aren't they even in the honorable mention list well John O'Connell down from the Jackson Citizen Pad I think maybe had the best answer uh, they lost their second game and then the writers from around the state that ranked these ball clubs uh, just kind of lost track of Lumen Christie because they had one loss but uh, and maybe because of their opponents points that the fact that they weren't rated in the playoff points kind of lost track of them and uh, for some reason uh, they got lost in the shuffle but uh, there aren't too many teams that uh, can play uh, with Lumen Christie this year in class B they're an excellent football team and uh, I'm sure Herb Brogan and his staff are going to show it or try to show it tonight Herb uh, I talked to him before the ball game I did not get a chance to talk to Tom Stobie of course because he had kept his ball club uh, secluded uh, away from the field for the last few minutes as Tom just explained Herb Brogan says uh, they're looking for anything tonight uh, uh, I asked him if he'd gone against the wishbone um, this year he said he doesn't expect to see it uh, that much he says we might even see Freddie Parker at quarterback and uh, all sorts of configurations and formations out there tonight. Now, Lumen Christie won the toss, but they declined uh, and will keep their option till the second half. So Jackson High, Tom, will uh, kick it off the isn't gonna last down at the uh, north end. Tom? Only a few minutes away from football here as we uh, conclude, and we have a sideline report downfield. Let's get down to my good friend John Salah. John? Well, just as the weather gets cold and it gets a little bit chilly around the Jackson area, We've got a red-hot football game out on the field tonight. The Jackson High Vikings, a tough luck team during the 84 season. They've got some pretty good football players on that field. You know the story of Lumen Christie. Only one single loss this season in the hands of Harper Woods' Bishop Gallagher. And, of course, when it's for the championship in the city of Jackson, throw all the records out the window. You remember triple overtime last year? It could happen tonight. We know one thing for sure. We're going to see a whale of a football game. We'll be bringing you interviews on the sideline. We'll have a big report at halftime. But just before the start of the game, let's kick it back upstairs to Ed Roman and TOC. Take it away, guys. Well, we're a matter of a minute or two away from the start of this 84 collision between the Vikings of Jackson High and the uh, Lumen Christie Titans, the Titans explosive uh, football team. As Ed mentioned, and surely I'll reiterate, they are without a doubt in least in my humble opinion, at least in the top five in the state in Class B, they might be better than that. But as Ed mentioned, Jackson I, though they came off a loss, did play uh, a fine club to a seven-sip defeat. In a ball game, actually, they might with a couple of breaks uh, possibly have won. But one weapon they don't have, unless they come up with a rabbit out of the derby, Ed Roman, uh, Dave Wolf will do a commendable job, I am sure. He's a very versatile ball player. He's a fine runner. He's a great defensive player, for that matter. But uh, due to the injuries sustained by the two quarterbacks, Klima and near pass, uh, they just don't have that weapon to pass, unless, as I say, they come up with something in the last seven days. But Tom, they, uh, that's what I said. Herb Brogan feels that uh, they may uh, uh, throw a little bit of anything at, uh, at uh, Christie tonight, maybe even some new formations. He doesn't think they'll see the bone. Uh, maybe see somebody else at quarterback besides David Wolf. Uh, David, as I said, uh, just did a commendable job in there. 
last week uh, running that offense. And they're liable to see just about anything. Christie, of course, has moved some JVs up, as has Jackson High. So they've got a complete uh, complement of players out there as they get ready to go. And uh, as you can see out there now, uh, the uh, pregame uh, hysteria has reached its peak on the Lumen Christie side. Tom? Well, the fans still trickling in, but that is exactly what they're doing. They are trickling in. And by that, I mean they're not coming in on mats. So we're going to be uh, pretty well shallow of the anticipated uh, attendance tonight for this uh, 84 game. It's difficult to really explain it. I can't explain it. I, I've uh, attempted to explain it, but it's difficult. Uh, there must be a reason. It can't be the economy. I can't believe that. The tickets are two bucks at the school during the week and three bucks at the gate. And it's, uh, it's a game with our two uh, city high school teams. And they're playing at the tailgate of the year. So uh, there has to be just automatic fever interest regardless of what records these teams have. And they're both sky high, as you can see the Vikings doing the tumble act coming out here under the Viking Club banner. And Lumen Christie, of course, uh, the Lumen fans, the majority of them at least, were across the way on the far side of Withington Stadium. Now down below the Viking fan, the Vikings being introduced, and Lumen Christie already has been, so we're a matter of seconds away uh, from the 84 edition of the City of Jackson football title. As I mentioned, Pete's a please, your host. We surely enjoyed having them with us during the course of this football campaign. We hope that you'll uh, find time to enjoy their fine pizza because they've got it. One of the new members of their pizza family, actually, about a month old. Their famous pizza taco grande, that's our Jones's favorite for only $9.95. The double L crust. And they have that famous take two, and that take two is something else because if you take two, well, you've got one for five bucks. 14 inch take two for $8. And they've got circuiters out there with valuable coupons with a dollar off and home delivery. You wrap that all together, my friend, and you've got a pizza party going. We're still standing by for the start of this football game. This is the finale, of course, for both teams, and very obviously the wrap-up for the seniors of both teams playing their last game. Lumen Christie, a few weeks ago, I thought might have a shot at postseason play, but they will not have it. And as Ed mentioned, they weren't ranked in the top 20. That has to be one of the fallacies of the year. That is uh, something that I can't explain, and I don't think anybody else can explain. If those guys who are supposed to put the, put the teams in and rate them can't do better than that, they should quit. They shouldn't even have a rating system. On that basis alone, at least, if I pinpointed in Class B in the state, it surely makes no, no sense to me, and it makes no sense to anybody else, and there's no way to justify it. So Jackson I, Lumen Christie about ready to go here. Your host, John LaFear Ford, the winning combination. Hunt Club on Wildwood, Home of Satellite Television, Bob's Country Stores on Horton Road and Spring Arbor Road. Scott Machine, the West Point Lounge, where you can watch this ball game in our TV playback. White's Chicken Little with three locations in Jackson and the Jackson Co-op Federal Credit Union. Well, Ed, uh, we're seconds away now. You know, it would take almost a miracle to get a repeat of last year. I listened to uh, Greg O'Connor's report on WKHM before we came on TV tonight, uh, covering the highlights of last year's game between these two, which went triple overtime, some miracle situations, also some controversial situations in that one. But uh, as I build it, and I, I talked to many fans who watched that ball game between these two a year ago, that said they've never seen a football game out here to match that. And I've got to believe it. And that's uh, taking into consideration the many great games that surely have been played on the old field here. Uh, St. John, St. Mary's, Parkside, Jackson High, Lumen Christie, and you name it. Well, it had everything, Tom. It had uh, uh, excitement. It had uh, some confusion on the part of the officials, uh, plus some great individual plays by uh, uh, Jackson High. I remember Lance Lamb uh, uh, came up with a big tackle there in that overtime period for Jackson High and uh, just some great plays by Christie and uh, the three overtimes you couldn't ask for anything more. We've got uh, Schaefer ready to kick off for Jackson High and uh, uh, Kendrick down there deep number two and uh, Smith uh, number uh, 85 I believe it is Tom is back deep on that far side. Here's the 84 championship game kickoff. And in over under a bounder bouncing around. If mo nope, not fumble, pick up back there. Detman has the ball. Detman's rolled out of bounds between the 25 and the 30 in Jackson High, first and 10. He was by number 24, Brian Mearswell. has stopped number 24 for the uh, Lumen Christie Titans. Jackson's got the football first and 10. 
They pitch the ball in. They'll put it down at the 29. So Jackson I first and 10. Dave Wolf, the quarterback. Number 33 up in front. They got Shelford, Richards, Taylor, Shuffler, and Shaughnessy. And we may have a momentary delay here, and I didn't spot him across the way. It either is a shoelace disengaged or something. Detman may have a knot in the lace. No, he's all right. He's coming back. So here we go. The first play from scrimmage. Jackson High Vikings with the ball. Coming in, I have to believe, as an underdog. And they've got definite quarterbacks, so they have made some changes. Oh. Shotgun. <laughs> here we go. Shotgun back. It goes over his head. He's back at the five, the four, the three. He's in the end zone, and he is out of the end zone to the five. The snap back by Taylor got over his head. They went shotgun in the opening play. They had two splits to the left. That is wide outs. And they went shotgun. The ball sailed high, and Jackson got a break in getting the ball back at the five. But Tom Detman is hurt also. He called the play. That's why I told you I thought he was going to quarterback. And as we expected, uh, some trickery. And uh, now we'll see what happens. David Wolf back at quarterback. Uh, both Darren Detman is going to be the quarterback in the game. I got to believe that. Here they are from the five yard line. Play coming off on the left. 5'10. He's out to the 12, maybe the 13 yard line. The ball carrier there. To the about the 13. 22 There was a marker dropped on that play, I believe. They're conferring out here now around the around the five. Yeah. Right. Well, we're checking numbers early. They've got a couple of numbers here. Don't even show in our master sheet. So Ed Roman's going to take a trip to Hawaii and find out. The ball is out on the 12. A long yardage, of course, because Jackson I on that high snapback when they were in that shotgun to open the game, set them back to the to the five. Hunter goes right secondary and he's out to the 18 yard line. Erwin Kendrick, the ball carrier, getting out to around the 18 before he was turfed in there by Timmy Johnson, linebacking number 30 on the left for a little bit. But that necessitates a punt. Of course, they lost considerable yardage. In fact, the matter is they're well back with a fourth down, long 22 yards. So Jackson and I quickly must go back in punt formation. Jackson and I punt formation, snap and kick from the seven. High wobbly kick coming down. Fair catch call for it. The 49. He indicated fair catch to keep the ball. That's power with the ball. And he's down feet to the 35. They have to drop a flag. He indicated fair catch. And remember the ball in Roman. I call fair catch. And the, unless he was waving a local airplane, I can't believe that. So they're going to have to take that ball back and they get penalized off it. That has to be because he put his arm up, indicating fair catch at the 48 or 49. They dropped the flag at the 48. Now they confer here at the 48. That would be in Lumen territory. That was a pretty good kick, too. Frankly, the first kick of the game, of course, Jackson and I, well, they got the ball and had fairly, fairly good position around their own 28. But the opening play surely backfired right in their face of the high snap. And the official now is looking up this way and we'll get the indication here in a moment. Well, they still haven't given it to us unless they... No, they have not. Oh, we're having problems early tonight. I think they're a little confused themselves, Tom, uh, at this point. One official wants the football back at the 20, at the 23 yard line. I don't know whether he's gonna stay there. Well. The Apparently, the other official, they're, they're very definitely uh, not in communication with each other. They're going to put the ball down at the 24. I think it's just a five yard penalty against Lumen Christie. Uh, Tom and Jackson I is going to punt over, I believe. Oh, it's a fourth down. Of course, that'll take five yards off the preceding yardage of 22. It's still a punt, of course. Mike Knowles will kick it upstairs. The ball is on the 20, 24 yard line, fourth down 17. Now, that could have been a smart play. It just hinges on what happens on this punt. The violation cost them five yards. They do not get possession, but Jackson I get to kick the football again. 
Knowles, as you view, is on the 10. He'll pick from roughly the 14. The high snap again. It's over his head, into the end zone. Can he kick it out of there? Nope, he'll step out of the end zone. There's smart football. That young man, that young man's been to rehearsal, Ed Roman. He knew what to do. He stepped out of there. They'll take two, but uh, that gives him a free kick. But that's about the only thing they conceivably could have done. Moving Christie on the safety two-point lead. They'll get the ball back and a free kick from the 20-yard line for Jackson Hyde. Smart play there, Ed. Tom, the uh, Knowles uh, did the right thing. I, I feel sorry for uh, Jackson High center at this point. He's, I know on that first play they went, wanted to see what they could come up with trickery wise and and uh, they shot it right down by having that bad snap and of course uh, having him uh, uh, snap on this uh, punt over the head and in and out of the end zone uh, sure didn't help things and I'm sure Tom Stobie now has got to get the young man's confidence back and uh, get him settled down. I'm sure they're sky high and uh, see what they can do. So we're going to either see a punt here by Knowles or a kickoff and uh, the official now will uh, let him make his choice from the 20-yard uh, line. So Jackson I digging a hole for itself, really, though the two points was the only option they had there on that high snapback, so we've had a pair of those. One on the opening play of the game, in fact, the first play of the game for the Vikings when they went into that shotgun. That sent them back to the five. The penalty against the Vikings took five off the fourth and 22. And a high snap back end zone. No chance for Knowles. Just out of the end zone. Two points. Free kick from the 20. And that's exactly where we are here. The 9.57 point of the opening period. Understand now, Lumen Christie has not had the football, really. They had a fair catch call that they blew on them and they violated. They put, the, put their hand up. The receiver did, then ran with it. So here we go. They're going to place kick off the free kick in the 20. And we're waiting for the whistle. And there it is. And he kicks. Low bounder downfield. Back to the 42. Picked up back there. Kelly, I believe it is. Or Lafeer. Lafeer comes down to the about the 40. Lafeer to the 40 or maybe 39. We're moving Christian Levy first and 10. Andy Lafeer has been good when he's been in. He hasn't really played that much. Wayne Cook when we have a stop there at the 39. Moving Christie first down and 10. Bulldogs backfield for Lumen. Deep back gets the call, comes off tackle 30, dragged down to the 25 yard line. Brian Kelly going to the 25. He was tackled by number. But not much trouble on that one. He got down to the 26, they say. Detman made the stop on him. First and 10 for Lumen Christie from the 26. Championship game here in 1984. Lumen Christie uh, coming out here with a first down and 10. Ball on the 26, they eye, they slot right. Van de Beans on the outside. The play comes right, 20, 30, 25, 20, stays inbound. Did he stay inbound? The official said he stepped out of there around the 11. Brian Kelly tiptoed his way through the near sideline as he was forced finally out of there by Smith number 85. As Lumen moves in two plays with a pair of 10-yard gains, well, slightly better than 10 yards, they're down in the Jackson High 11. They've got Kelly back there, uh, Steve Johnson is back there with them, Van Der Veen back. Balance line, full house, they don't split either side as Tom Sullivan comes out from the 11. Hand off, off tackle, butting to the 7, 8 or 7, it'll be, it would be Brian Kelly. On the carry as the Vikings stop him, Lance Lamb made the hit number 67, and Dave uh, Bolteis, number 84. They gain three on the run, second down and seven. Lumen Christie sporting a 2 0 lead over Jackson High in the opening quarter of play, 8.47 on the timepiece. DOC with Ed Roman and John Salab and Art Jones tonight. The ball's at the eight. Sullivan takes, Sullivan hands it off, Andrew Bean right through the middle, and he sojourns his way to where? They're going to call him at the, about the foot line, about a foot short of a touchdown. His knee touch there, just short of the goal line. Van Der Bean couldn't have nailed him. So Lumen's about a foot away, and so far they have run pretty much at will in. They haven't hit the ball that much, but when they've had it, they've done it. They went for a pair of first down, Van Der Bean, big hole. Cut back over the middle, and they're down in the foot line, looking very close to a nine-point lead of this football game. 
Their power eye now, the deep back, is Brian Kelly, number 22. Gets the handoff, end zone, touchdown. Brian Kelly, with two blockers in front of him, goes in for the foot that he needed, and Lumen Christie is out in front here, eight to nothing. In the early minutes of the opening quarter at Whittington Stadium. Well, they had no problem at all once they got their bits of that football in. Uh, Jackson and I, of course, uh, had some problems. Schaefer now will attempt the extra point, I would presume so. As they go for two, they lead by eight. And Ioka will hold the ball at the ten. Snap and he kicks. It's upstairs and over and up and good. And Lauren Christie is out in front of the ball game, nine nothing. In the early minutes of this uh, 84 collision, meaning very obviously that Jackson Iowa will have to come back. From what I've seen so far, Jackson Iowa will have to get some offense to keep that football away from Lumen. They have a wide open offense. They mix, they mix their run, they mix their passes, and uh, there's something to contend with. And I just have to believe that Jackson cannot make the mistake. Now, they already have made a couple of them. One of those things that can happen, you hope it does, depending on who you're rooting for, but uh, those two snapbacks surely hurt them. As uh, Christie, with her first possession, moving quickly downfield, Schaefer will kick off from down below here at the 40. Many guests at halftime tonight. Uh, Council will be interviewing the athletic directors of both schools, Dennis Kelly of uh, Jackson High, the courser of Newman Christie, and many others. Tom Sullivan Sr. will be on. Kendrick and Smith of the two deep men back for the Vikings. Here's a Schaefer kick. Sailing in over and downfield. Grab at the 22, run 25. And the 30, and he's there at the 30, and he's down at the 30 yard line. Down at the 30 yard line. The ball is at the 30 yard line. Well, there's a familiar name, Mike Wilson. He can't be slow playing. <laughs> I don't believe that. Jackson I first and ten from their own 30. They're running down below to the right of our Channel 4 microphone, and they're running here on the short side of the field. The long side is to your right. Wolf hands it off, play left, he's out for five, he's out for six, and he gets a hard six yards. Gary Pryor, number 22, number that didn't show in our program a moment ago out there. Matt Babcock turfed him, but he came out pretty well to the 37th. 70 yard gain, second down and three. Nine nothing, Lumen Christie leads here at 7.25 to go in the opening quarter of play. The wishbone for you, Wolf. Under there, front back, he's gonna turn, and he didn't do bad. He should have been stopped back there at the 35. He got to the 39. Kevin McCluskey, number 11, spun away from the tackler, twisted his way up to about the 40-yard line. Before Mike Bolger made the stop at him. Mike fine defensive game last week. In the uh, Christie win, it's a third down one with the ball rested between the 39 and the 40-yard line. Jackson I in possession, they're down nine nothing. Safety TD an extra point, and that's in a six-man front defensive line, six three two at the moment. Here we go, the handoff. Play comes right, looks for running room, finds it up for a first down, dive to the 44. Kendrick, good play. Kendrick swing through there. Vikings do have speed. As I say, the big thing uh, is negative tonight is the fact they don't have the air arm. Looking up with something. Babcock needs to stop for a moment. And the ball's in the 43, and Jackson I first down and 10. First and 10. 6.20 to go. First throw in a play. Whittington Stadium, 44 yard line. Vikings running in their own territory. Hand off. Play comes left. Look running. Secondary. Here you go. 50, 45. He's down to the 43 yard line. Corey Pryor, number 22, to the 43. And they found the seam in there. A hole in there. Mike Scalski, number 89. In for Christie to stop the play between the 43 and the 44 yard line. Now yeah, let's start up the fans uh, down below us. We're on the Jackson side of the field. The Lumen fans haven't filled the far side, but they have a, a pretty big turnout here to watch this one. Another first and ten for Jackson High. First down. We're in the power eye now. Dave Wolf down there called him at the 44. Wolf fumbles the ball, dives on it. I believe Jackson High made the recovery at the 44. 
Wolf dove, and he did. Dave Wolf alertly pounced on the ball, and that would have been a quickly a Christie possession in their own 44. The wasted down is what it develops into, actually. In fact, the men have lost the yard. It'll be second down 11. The Acton doesn't spread anybody. They don't flank anybody here. They shade their right and left end out a little bit, but they don't go wide either side. Here's Wolf, and the keeper keeps the ball. Wolf, and he drives down to the 40, 39-yard line. Nelly marked, and they did drop it. A little delay on the drop. A holding call possibly here. They dropped a marker at the 40. Wolf has power. He can run. We have seen him do that. Here they went right on the option play, kept the ball, found the hole, didn't get in there. Holding. And the holdings against Newman Christie High. And, and that will be a break. Tom, it was away from the ball. I don't know. Uh, somebody, I think, is going to come out of the ball game awful quick. Uh, see what happened. Uh, Coach Brogan got be a little unhappy with that one. I believe uh, it was Mike Bollinger. Uh, takes that football down field to the Lemon Christie 25 yard line. What it does. I over the fifth year tonight as we have been. We've been here for years my friend. Nothing new about that one. First down and ten. Jackson I on the holding call against Lumen. And a fine call there by Dave Wolf in front of the penalty. There at the 25. Offside, everybody jumped. Jack said four or five men jumped. And Lubin may have jumped, but I believe Jack would be the recipient of that penalty, and that would make it, if the penalty is assessed, and it's very safe to assume it will be, they'll take that ball back up five more yards. So, five yard penalty up to the 30. They get the down back, but they tack on five to the 10. It'll be first and 15, Ed. Tom Jackson High still. Uh overcoming their mistakes uh, with a couple of nice runs by the Southmore prior up from the JVs and uh, also the help of that uh, penalty on uh, Lumen Christie. First down, 15 yards to go. Whoa, on a handoff, play coming left, speed on the outside. Prior hit, stop, he gets to the 20. Just his way up, up to the 20 to the 18 yard line. Going outside, he comes back in there. They do have speed, no kidding about that. Pretty much McConnor, he breaks right, he went left with it. And Pryor was nailed at the 18, and Jackson and I moving that football. Well, that wasn't but, no. On that play alone, they picked up uh, 12 yards, second down four. Not only speed, but Pryor showed amazing uh, strength as he bounced off a couple would-be tacklers. So Jackson and I, second down, four yards to go. They trail by nine. They're trying to pick up some ground. Here's a hand up, play left. They'll stop that play at the 19. Kendrick was hit in his tracks at the 19-yard line. No chance to move through there at all. O'Neill and Haynes. Haynes defending left O'Neill in the middle for Lumen. It'll be a third down, six yards to go in the championship game here in 84. Lumen coming in a favorite to win. I would have to believe that. But that is of no particular consequence. Jackson I can get a tally in here. They'll tighten her up. They trail 9-0. Both on the take. As a keeper by Wolf, he keeps the ball. He drives by one, he gets by two. And Dave Wolf is knocked out of bounds, and he's got a first down. Well, that's what you call strength, too. He uh, had a man on him over there. Babcock finally knocked him out of bounds. As Wolf turned the, well, he actually went out on an option to the right, and he kept the ball. Time he, he just rolled. Three previous plays back, and this time he got it down to the 10. He just lowered a shoulder on Rusty Ayuni and ran over him, and uh, Babcock finally had to put him out of bounds. Well, Jackson I staying on the turf. You can expect that. First and 10 from the 10. In Lumen territory. Play comes off to the right, a dive. He gets a pair, no more. Freddie Parker, number five, to the, I don't believe much more than the nine yard line. They'll have to turn and show me. They'll have to put the football in to show me. They have it covered at the moment. They put that ball down between the nine and the 10. I'd have to believe personally it's a during here so far in this early period that Jackson and I will have to go outside. Second down, nine yards to go. They're at the nine yard line. 3 11 to go in the first period. Wolf delays, hands it off, play left, he spins, and he's tri tri tripped at the 10. Harry Pryor, nowhere to go on a marker dropped in the play. Pryor stopped at the 10. As Lumen covered that play well, there was no room. Illegal procedure call. Viking from the call for illegal procedure five yards. Well, that ball at the 10, you can almost call the uh, the shot that the uh, 
penalty will not be refused. Well, they talk to Lumen. We'll have to wait and see. Many times, uh, we're there. Nope, they're going to decline it. What they want to do there is up the down box, which, of course, they have done. That's their theory, and uh, that particular theory is uh, usually pretty good. It'll be third and ten. Well, they could attack five more yards onto it, but as it is, it'll be a third and ten. It will be interesting to see if the Vikings, if they don't have that weapon, will throw the ball. Third and ten from the ten, Wolf takes, it's a pitch, it's a reverse, they come left from the reverse, reverse left at the ten, and he's going to be dropped at the ten-yard line. James Smith, number 85, he was at the end of route, actually, but a reverse play, and uh, it was stopped, Lumen dying. The play ran pretty slow in Roman, scouts get Smith in to get him, and they stopped the play at the ten, so it'll be fourth down. The fact of the matter is, he did not get back to the 10. The ball is actually closer to the 11. Tom, I don't think uh, they've got the kicker. In fact, David Wolf again is, is lining up, so they're going to go for the marbles. Well, slightly better than two minutes remain here in the first period of play. It is a fourth down 11. Wolf brings them out. See if they fling it. They almost have to throw here, I would say. Wolf takes. It's a pitch. He goes to Detman, he wants to throw it, throws it, and he throws it incomplete. He threw it, Tim Johnson, number 30, covered there, and uh, no chance in that play at all. There is no room in the world to do anything as Christie covered the play, and it is Lumen's football, first and ten. Well, Lumen got a pretty good defensive test there, of course. Uh, also, we might add... The 15-yard holding penalty gave the Vikings a pretty good opportunity to cash in, but Luton's defense stiffened and stopped them. But they definitely on that play wanted Detman to throw that football, and he did flip it, but uh, no play. Luton now with the ball, first down and 10. And off, second back through, and he leaps uh, forward or close to the 15-yard line. Steve Johnson is pretty much of a bread and butter runner for Luton this year. Getting up to the 15. It'll be a second down and six. They'll take it back a yard. 1.35 to go. First quarter of play. Lumen Christie nine. Jackson high nothing in the opening quarter. Channel four. Some of the only cable TV. TOC with Ed Roman and John Salam and Art Jones. With football, the finale of the 84 campaign. Solomon I. One man split right. Pitch. It's Bell with the ball, 15-20, Bell to the 25, Bell comes out to the 30-yard line. And was knocked down, down in front of the Viking bench, down below our Channel 4 microphone. And the young man who hit him was Steve Critton at number 44. And this Todd Bell, not big, but he can fly. Another first and 10 for Lumen at their own 29-yard line. And we're getting close to the final minute of play in the opening quarter. And still trickling in, ball game with a pretty fair crowd, but not a big one. Not for this one. Sullivan takes, second perk, he fake to the front back, he went to the second back through there, and that would be, it is Kelly, who is the, was the tailback in that play, and he crossed the 30 for an easy, well, first I say easy, it wasn't that simple, but he got enough yard out to 32, and Mike Shetler, 66, stopped him there, and Wilbur Christie rolls here with a second down seven, so they pick up three yards. Almost a six-man defensive front there. Vanderveen comes in motion from left to right. Sullivan hands off to Johnson. Johnson bangs his way to the 35-yard line. Christie running in its own territory, coming out to close to the 35. Jackson I showed great defense last week against Lansing Sexton. Irwin Kendrick is on the bottom there. The Vikings here. Clock running down. That could be it is. I'm sure it will be. The final play it is. At the end of the opening quarter of play at Withington Stadium. With Lumen Christie in possession of their own 34-yard line. Third and five. Lumen leads 9-0. We'll be back with more action in a moment. John LaFear Ford, the winning combination. The Hunt Club on Wild with home of satellite television. Follow all your college games, the pro games. Bob's Country Stores on Horton Road, the Spring Arbor Road, Bob Fox, behind this mic for several years. Scott Machine, the great booster of local sports. The West Point Lounge, where you can, and many have, understand what the 
playback of high school football on Channel 4 there. White Chicken Little with three locations in Jackson and the Jackson Goa uh, Federal Credit Union. Nine nothing at the end of the opening period of play. Lumen Christie in possession. We're back into action now as Lumen will run the ball on their own 34. So here come the Titans. They will spread off to the right. Believe that's Vanderbeek. The handoff goes to Bell. Bell leaps and jumps all across the 40 out to the 43. On Bell to the 43-yard line before the Vikings are able to converge and bring him down to this artificial turf. Another Lumen Christie, first and ten. Time out, Jackson, Tom. Uh, number 24 was in there on that tackle, uh, but we've had some problems here. With they brought up some of these people, but, uh, of course, did not put them in the program until late, and we apologize for that, but uh, we can't do anything if they don't uh, send us up any information uh, beforehand. I don't know why uh, time out right at that point, Tom. They just had the uh, quarter there, and... Uh, whether uh, they spotted something, uh, Jackson High's defensive people spotted something they didn't like or what, but uh, there was a timeout. There's that Jackson High band that's been so faithful and so loud uh, and uh, throughout the season and uh, still back in those Vikings. Lumen Christie on the road, 43, as we are just about set to swing into action. Next, we have had a play, but we we'll call that timeout, as Ed mentioned. Lumen with a first and 10 from the road, 43. Shirley Stat will put them well ahead. The differential in the tally is not that high, 9 nothing. Todd Bell to the right. In fact, they spread two to the right. They're in the eye. Sullivan fakes a double handoff. He's going to go bomb. He does go bomb. Throws. Knocked down at the 24-yard line. Smith, the young man who got in front of the intended receiver there, he had a double, double fake, actually crisscrossed his back. I thought it might have been a wing, you know, wing back uh, from the end around in that situation there, but he didn't get it. He double faked, then drifted back, and he threw bomb, but incomplete. So they do have the thrower. Tom Sullivan has had a tremendous season for Lumen. It's second down and ten. And off play goes right. Brian Kelly the ball. Kelly leaps across the 45, goes to the 47. And he's hit there. Crittenden, Steve Crittenden, 44 in the middle for the Vikings. Made the stop. The ball's on the 47. Clock showing a third down and six for Christie with a 9 0 lead. And stand they got their first two and a safety in the early minutes of the opening period. Went down, scored, picked up the conversion, and that's the nine they have. That's the scoring story so far in the game. Gary Smith wide at the right. Bell is just out inside of him. Sullivan back to pass. 39 throws over the middle. Caught, dropped, good throw. He hit Bell perfectly as he uh, crossed over from that slot spot, and he should have had it. That ball was put right there, Red Roman, but the quarterback will get an incompletion. Well, I think that has a little to do uh, uh, with that cold weather. I think the first few passes tonight by either team, you're going to see that. Uh, so we've got uh, Monty back there to punt, Tom. Danny back in his own 35. Single safety for the Vikings back here behind the 20. Snap and kick. Sails it upfield, bouncing around at the 25. It'll go out of bounds, and it knocks the, uh, the marker down at the 20. So I know it's close to the 20 because it hit the marker and the marker flips. So Jackson and I will have the football back with an opportunity to come back here. Ball of the 22, Jackson High, first down and 10. Well, they're playing uh, on a good night Friday. If it had Friday been Thursday, it would have been a rainy night. But tonight, just about perfect. Very ideal. Pretty good crowd, but not the best in the business. Wishbone they're in now. Dave Wolf on the call back here at the 22. Fake, fake, hands off. Cracked away up 25, 27 he went. Erwin Kendrick. 
Henry crossing the 25, out to the 27. Jim Bustle got his bits on him there. Big 77 for Lumen. The gain of four to five in the play. They'll call it second down and four from the 20, 26. Final game of the year, as I mentioned, the seniors, of course, are playing their final game of their respective schools. Second six. Wolf on the pitch, the play's coming right. Lumen tries to get him, and they do get him at the 26. Pryor just could not get outside. No way in the world. A couple of guys stayed at home, and Tim Johnson did, number 30. And rolled him out of bounds just across the 25-yard line. As I mentioned, John Salah will be interviewing a special guest here at halftime tonight from down in the field. Dennis Kiley for one, Tim Kersher, respective athletic directors of Jackson High and Lumen Christie. Those other luminaries in the city. Third down six. Well, Bunny Keeper rolling left. He's trapped. He fumbles. Lumen may have the ball lead too, I believe, at the 17. Lumen recovered that fumble. The uh, wolf went up to his left. He could not hang on. He was nailed. He fumbled, and Lumen's got the ball at the 17 yard line. Tom Bullinger, I believe, fell on the ball. Tim Johnson was in there, and I'm trying to get that other number. I believe it was Jim Bussell. It's, uh, Wolf just did not have a chance to uh, set up and was nailed. Well, the bumble by Dave Wolf there. Ball is on the 18. Lumen leads by nine. Van de Bean is winged off to the right. A fake, a keep, a throw. Short throw out here. He's got him. He's got Johnson. Johnson is knocked out of bounds around the five yard line. Well, Lumen Christie rolling here, and this ball game hopefully won't get out of range. It, I'd like to see a game like this do it. Possibly it will not, and I'm hoping it doesn't. But uh, you just can't make mistakes against this Lumen football team, and the Vikings have made a few of them. They're going to fumble once in a while. They had a couple of bad snaps that opened the game that hurt them. And uh, Christie opportunist. There's a keeper by Sullivan. Sullivan's going to go into the end zone. And Sullivan is in the end zone for a Lumen touchdown. There was a, quite a delay there, Ed. Uh, I don't know that that was the play or design to that area, but coaches might forget in a hurry when you get a touchdown, and Sullivan got it through, and it's Lumen leading here 15 to nothing. And Dan Schaefer here with Ione holding from the 10. Well, Lumen with a 15 to nothing lead of the 9.35 mark in the opening, in the, uh, the first half of play in Worthington. Schaefer will be back next year, too. He is a, a junior for the Titans. Snap and the kick. He puts it up the middle, end over end. The official says it is good. Lumen Christie with a 16 to nothing lead. Now they will put the ball up, and the Vikings will get another opportunity to come back and slice something off that differential, which is a 16 zip margin. And a lot of football time left the second period. Tonight in the third period, we're going to go uh, to radio for a while. Pick up uh, Greg O'Connor and uh, his crew tonight. A little anomaly type thing. Uh, Greg first broke in with me many years ago. He helped me with North, came back. And uh, figure in the finale here, we'll do something a bit different. So for part of the third period, at least, we'll uh, pick up the radio account. Jackson and I, Little Christie here at the stadium. 9.35. Kendrick Smith of the two deep men back yeah, for the Vikings of Jackson High as the kick them up again. Lumen sporting a 16 0 lead. 9.35 to go in the first half. Low downfield bounder like the shortstop hop. Hits the 30. Will they play it? He hits it. He touched the ball. The ball's loose. I believe Christie recovered the ball they did at the 24 yard line. Go ahead, Roman. I'm going to tell you something. Some nights you can't do a thing right. McCluskey, uh, I don't know why he waited for that ball. He waited, uh, as they say in baseball, he let the hop play him, and he waited, and uh, by the time he got the ball in his arms, he looked up about the same time, and he got hit, and uh, Christie's got the ball back. Well, one thing about it, that ball was round. It might have been a bit easier, but that ball sometimes will, will hop away from you, hop into you, and you just can't contain it. That's what happened there. Mental error, mechanical error, Lumen first and ten, Sullivan. Back to throw a pass. Sullivan looks. He goes into the end zone. He throws. 
It is, I believe, nope, incomplete. In the end zone, it was nearly complete. It was also nearly intercepted. The crowd roared across the way in the far corner of the end zone, and Freddie Parker defended back there and saved a pair. The nine-minute mark here in the first half. Johnson went up. I thought he had it. In fact, across the way, they thought he had it. But the official said, nope, did not. High formation. Van to to the right. Second down, 10. Sullivan on the 50. Goes the bell. Bell 30. Bell 25. Bell 20. Bell 20. Bell is across the 20. Bell to the 15. Nope, just shy of the 15-yard line. Todd Bell is small, but I'll tell you something. This kid, he's got all his weight someplace. Said, where he has it, I don't know. But he can carry that mail. The official will call that ball at the 16. Uh, we Roman pointed Christie out leading here by 16 and they're on the Jackson High 16. And we pointed out before I believe early in the season Tad Bell's a hard nosed young man loves to play the game. He also is an excellent hockey player and uh, just loves the uh, contact sports. And to be wide right. No flanks left through the eye again. Sullivan for the 16. Sullivan hands it off this tight. They stop the play at the line of the 15. Johnson hit in his tracks there at the 15. We'll get the Viking who made the hit there. That was Trinton right in the middle, 44. Now, Lumen Christie right now with a fourth down. And they need less than a yard from the Viking, 15. We're inside the eight minute mark as Vanderbeen goes to the right. He's on a wing spot. They don't spread wide on either side. They're going to go for the first down, and they've got that, I believe. The dive there was uh, Brian Kelly getting across the 15 to roughly the 13-yard line, and Lumen Christie with the first down. And Freddie Parker, the hit. And the Vikings are in trouble. They're down by 16, but the Lumen Christie tightens off that fumble. Have the ball across the 15 at the 14-yard line. Seven minutes and 42. That is the time remaining here in the first half of play. Todd Bell wide right. And they've got the prime receiver out here. Jerry Smith to the left. Could be a bluff, however. Sullivan of the pitch. He goes to Kelly. Kelly goes wide, and he gets some daylight. Here they call him out of bounds. Fish will mark the ball around the six-yard line. Brian Kelly just went wide. That's exactly what he did. The officials mark it down to the seventh. We'll be back with more action in a moment. Body of Jesus. Accident is having their biggest sale ever. And that means you save money three ways. First, you can get any new 84 Ford for only $49 over factory invoice. Then, Ford Motor Credit will finance any 84 Escort or Tempo at 11.9%. And finally, buy any new 84 and receive a free Florida vacation. Three great ways to save in half fun from John LaFear Ford and Jagger. But you better hurry. They're going fast. Is your financial future out of focus? We'll make things clearer for you at Jackson Co-op Federal Credit Union. We offer share drafts and share accounts that pay 6% compounded quarterly. We offer over 60 options in money market certificates and individual retirement accounts. Let our experts design a program personally tailored for you. We have money to loan for any good reason, and most importantly, you can join today. For a clearer look into your financial future, see Jackson Co-op Federal Credit Union, where financial excellence is a reality. Brian Kelly, Brian Kelly carrying the ball as we come back in the air lanes here, the TV lanes. The official is standing in the vicinity of the six. That's exactly where it is. It'll be a third down and between two and three. Okay, for a first and goal to go, will we see throw? I don't know. They mix them up. You can't anticipate with this uh, Lumen Christie offense as Sullivan uh, takes. Rolls right, keeps, Sullivan keeps the ball, and Sullivan gets, I am positive, enough for a first down. Sullivan rolling right, got one good block in there, and finally was turf, but he uh, hit Dave Wolf, who's the quarterback, but a fine defensive back for this Viking football team. Lumen's got a first down and goal to go, and that ball is on the other side of the four-yard line. They say the three. Well, from this angle, it's difficult to tell. I would have to say I'm approximating and leave it that way. 
inside of six minutes in the first half. And off play over middle, and he is in over the goal line touchdown. Kelly got the three yards. Well, Lumen Christie with a pretty good lead here in Roman. I think it's safe to make that statement. 22 0. And they can do what they want to on this next one. If they want to go for two, they very well could, but obviously they'll go for the 23rd point. Ione holding, Schaefer converting from the 10. 5.50 to go. Of course, the Vikings have actually assisted Lumen Christie to an extent as far as this lead's concerned. Turnovers have hurt him. The kick's up there. It's no good. Schaefer's kick no good. So as the clock stops at 5.50 in the second period of the 84 edition of the championship game for high school supremacy for this year, the Lumen Christie Titans have a 22-0 lead. The Vikings are going to have to play pretty good ball, Ed Roman. You know, if they get too far behind, I don't think 22 is prohibitive at the moment, but they get too far behind, the fact that they don't have that aerial weapon, they are very definitely in a trouble. Well, they're definitely limited in what they can do, Tom. We've seen it uh, already this year, and uh, they just, we pointed it out several times throughout the season. They've just struggled, uh, but uh, with the people they've got, uh, they're just a little limited, and uh, it's been just a fantastic season. I know a very exasperating one for Tom Stobie and his staff, but the Vikings, the one thing you can't deny them is they've never given up, and Christie didn't go too much inside their tackles. Here's the kick. Fumble back there. Finally, it's picked up back there by uh, Smith. Smith looks for running room. Can't find any, and he hit back behind the 20 around the 19 or 18-yard line. Looming all over him there. One of the front backs had a handle on that ball, and finally Smith picked it up and tried to run back. But at that juncture, Lumen Christie had him smothered back there behind the 20, and they'll pitch it into the 17. Jackson first and 10. And that's exactly where we are from their own the 17. One thing defensively, you know a team can't pass. We're not casting any aspersions on Jackson. They just don't have that weapon. They lost to their quarterback, Cleveland, their pass. Both of them could throw, and there's a flag dropped all over the place. Uh, one in the Viking backfield, and one on the other side of the restraining line. We'll see what they rule here. I think a procedure call. Five minutes and 25 seconds show. First half, Lumen on top, five-yard penalty. Boy, I'll tell you, these bikes can't afford that one. Takes the ball behind the 15, back to the 13-yard line. I don't know whether they're going to try a kick, quick kick here or not. Uh, Tom, they've sent three people in here uh, on this play, and they're spreading everybody wide. And I'll tell you, I wouldn't quick kick. They might do that. I wouldn't give Christy the football, frankly, but I, no, they're going to throw it on a shotgun. That's what they're going to do. Back he goes, Detman's with the ball. Detman tries to throw it, and he couldn't throw it. I think he had the motion, a passing motion, but they may rule, nope, they're going to rule, I think. Let's see, they rule fumble, and Lumen Christie has got that football back. Now, looking from here, it looked as though he had the motion throwing. If that is true, apparently they're not ruling that, however. It would be an uh, incomplete pass. But uh, Viking, uh, the rule call here is that Lumen Christie knocked the ball out of his hand, so it is strictly fumble and bustles the boy who did it, and Lumen's got the football back at the 12-yard line. So Lumen Christie has got the ball deep in Viking territory again with a 22-0 lead. Sullivan back to pass, throws. He's got his man open. He's going in. Touchdown. Wide open at the five-yard line. Tony Smith, number 82, was a secondary receiver for him, but he does pull in quite a few of them. Grabbed that ball and went unmolested into the end zone. And Lumen Christie now leads by 28 to nothing, and we have 4.42 to go in the second period. It was only a moment or two ago, seemingly a couple of minutes. In fact, it was that Schaefer uh, uh, missed an extra point, but he will try to compensate for that as they only want hold from the 10. Move a four touchdown lead. This time he puts it up there, up the middle, and it is what? No good again. Well, coaches don't like you to miss it no matter what, but I guess we're going to accept the miss and you might with a 28 nothing lead. Well, it's unusual. Schaefer's had an excellent year, but the last two have been off. Uh, 
I thought the one before this, the snap was a little high, and and uh, maybe it threw his timing off. I don't know what happened on this one, but uh, maybe just nothing more than concentration. But irregardless, the Titans uh, rolling at this point, 28 nothing, and uh, Jackson High dropping. Uh, Fire will be back there uh, this time, and uh, James Smith will be back there also. Well, it could be a long evening unless this Viking football team can retaliate. And they have given very few indication of being able to do that, though they have hurt themselves, of course, with the fumble. Here's the kick. Comes downfield. Grabbed by McCluskey. McCluskey looks for running room. Can't find any. Stopped at the 29 yard line. And McCluskey at the 29. And Jackson I, first down. That was Robbie Aoku who turned his number on the bottom down there. 29, Jackson first down. Lumen running and throwing and capitalizing, surely, on uh, the turnovers that have been presented to them. It's not the difference in the total score, but it might very well be the difference in part of it. Lefty goes. Wolf takes the pitch, keeps the ball, gets across the 30 to possibly the 31. Dave Wolf rolling left. But, uh, nowhere to go with that football. There's Mike Bollinger in there again. Tim Johnson for Lumen. It is second down. We'll call it second down and nine. 3.55 to go. The block running here at Withington Stadium. Five man front defensive line for Lumen. Handoff. Play comes outside. Oh, they score him down and drop him for a loss. Gary Pryor, number 22, hit behind the 29. Back in the 28. Moving all over him there. That was Haynes. Haynes along with uh, Tim Johnson, left linebacker, number 30. It'll be a third down, and uh, we'll call it third down eight. Ball back in the 28. But that should be better than that. Make it third and 10. A little better than three minutes to go. Second period. Lumen Christie on top, 28 to nothing. In the championship game, Dave Wolf on the call for him back there. Hands it off. Play goes left. Pryor, Pryor derailed at the 30. Boy, that Lumen defense just nowhere to go. Skalski led the hit, number 89 for Lumen. It'll be a fourth down. Tom Sullivan also in. Can't believe they used Tom Sullivan defensively with a 28-nothing lead. <laughs> the quarterback of the football team. Okay, Mike Knowles will be back in punt formation. Just a case of uh, protection for the quarterback. Uh, however, that's the way they go. Kelly and Barrel back for Lumen. Snap back. And the kick. Pretty good kick up field. A lot of hang time on it. Grabbed by Bell the 40. Bell 45. Bell the 50. Bell across the 50 to the 49 yard line. And knocked and rolled out of bounds in front of the Lumen bench across the way. It'll be Lumen's ball. First down. Kevin Shaughnessy, 63 on the stop. He rolled him out of bounds. Two minutes and 20 seconds. Lumen on top for the big lead of 28 to nothing. And they've got the football about a foot in the Viking territory. Well, John LaFear four with a winning combination for a newer use one either way. Hunt Club on Wildwood, home of satellite TV, great food and camaraderie. Bob's Country Stores. High formation, slot, one wide out. Sullivan back to pass at the 42. Looks, he's chased, he looks, he's hit, and got down for a lot back in the 42-yard line. Lance Lamb, number 67, decked in. And there's a sack back in the 42. Actually, Lumen was a foot across the 50, but right now they are nine, roughly 10 yards from there. It'll be second down and 19. Jerry Smith wide to the left. He may throw, I don't know. See what they do. Sullivan's back to throw a pass. Look out! Well, he got the pass away, incomplete. Almost a blindside hit. Brian Kelly. Well, Jackson getting through there. That was Dentman number 12, and I'm telling you, he nailed him. It'll be third down and 19. I think Tom uh, felt he got hit by an LTD. Uh, 
<laughs> on that one, I'll tell you. <laughs> Them and uh, put the hurt on him. Well, Lumen Christie in the round 41 with a third down 19. He lead here by 28 and 128 to go in the uh, first half of play. Channel 4, Simileone Cable TV, member of Booth Communications. Jerry Smith to the left. The only half wide right, that is Todd Bell. Tom Sullivan, one step back, cutting over the middle. Smith, he's got it. That's the original line of scrimmage, the 49. That's exactly where they spot that ball down. Smith caught that ball on a crossover, and Jim Smith hit him as they pulled the pass in. That's where the ball was. The original line of scrimmage, the 49, so it'll be fourth and 10. With a minute seven to go on a 28 nothing lead, Lumen could fool somebody and not punt. The odds say you would punt, but with the 28 nothing lead, Lumen's not gonna do that. They're coming out and they're gonna throw, I would say throw. You guess the throw here on a, on a 10 yard gain. Van Der Veen right, Jerry Smith left, Sullivan, one step back, two steps back, throws it out here, it's no good at the 39. Inter interference may be called, a pass incomplete. Jerry Smith, the re intended receiver, Critton, it'll be called for interference at the 38 yard line. And that would give Lumen Christie, I believe, it would, a first down. Automatic first down, Tom. Critton had just had to go over his back to get to the ball, and uh, there wasn't much he could, could do about it. Uh, at that point, he went for the ball, and, and Smith uh, used his body uh, enough to shield himself, and Critton had had to make contact uh, before he got to the ball. So the interference call, giving Lumen a first down across 35 to the 34-yard line. Tom Bell to the right. Jerry Smith to the left. So here we go. Sullivan to throw. Back, back, screen over the middle. It was, I believe, caught. However, Vanderbeen did get it, but uh, that screen didn't do anything for him. They played a stop 36-yard line. Curtin was all over him. There was a little middle screen that did not materialize. They, they actually worked the screen, but Jackson and I wasn't suckered there. They were all over him, and as he pulled it in, he was dropped. So it'll be a second down with 33 seconds of time to go here in the first half. Ed? Tom Crittenden's playing an outstanding ball game uh, defensively for the... Vikings, they uh, uh, have at times uh, been able to stop uh, Christie. Most of the problem is they've been deep in a hole all the time. Christie hasn't really had to put on a drive all night long. Jackson High has turned the ball over to them, and uh, they really just haven't had that far to go. Uh, the Viking defense, as I said earlier, uh, from tackle to tackle inside has been very tough. Christie has scored on that pass uh, over the middle. Tony Smith, somebody had a coverage problem, and... Uh, things broke down, but uh, uh, against the run, uh, Christie has not been uh, all that powerful tonight. They just uh, had short distances to go, and uh, they come up with some big plays. So Lumen with second down and 12 from the Viking 36. Sullivan back to throw. Sullivan looks. Sullivan throws. Out here it goes. And they bat it down. Todd Bell, the intended receiver. He was on a fly pattern there. Freddie Parker knocked the pass down. He was skirting inside that far sideline. There was a marker dropped at the 41. Blocking below the uh, waist, Tom, uh, on Lumen Christie. We have in seconds, uh, 26 seconds to go on the first half of play. Lumen with a 28 nothing lead. That mentioned, good point. There, there haven't been any big drives. But it's very obvious why, because the Vikings have presented that ball to him and pretty good field terrain in this game. Illegal Jackson has run well. They have thrown well. But uh, part of that 28 has surely come off of turnovers, which incidentally, and we all have to accept the fact, they're part of football. Ball in the 44. Lumen with that penalty, second down, and they got about a mile to go. Second down, 32. Kelly and Smith wide out. Draw a play and he fell down. They worked the draw and the play was stopped at the 39. Lance Slam hit nail Todd Bell on the draw. They worked the draw there, but I don't think it would have clicked for much yardage, frankly. But that's of no consequence. Uh, Bell slipped and fell as he got the ball on the draw. Six second final play of the first half. Third down, 37 yards to go. Official calling time. I cannot believe that. Officials Jackson and I may be calling time. 
They pointed to the Vikings, Tom. I guess, uh, well, they did call a timeout, so. Uh, this they, would be Bob with two seconds. In other words, time for another play. If they do get the playoff, that is problematical, too. Both coaches are out, and under the new rules, they can. Uh, Jackson and the downside, they'll have to regroup and surely come up with something, and they'll need quite a bit to get back in it. There's surely ample time to do that. But it'll be at least the 28 nothing Lumen Christie Lee to the intermission. As I mentioned, John Salab will be interviewing uh, some well-known people in the, uh, on the sports front, of course. Coming up at halftime, be beamed in. Call, of course, brought to you by, as we've told you, the Hunt Club on Wildwood, John LaFear Ford, the Jackson Co op Federal Credit Union, Bob's Country Stores, Spring Arbor Road, Horton Road, the West Point Lounge, White Chicken Little with three locations in the city, and Scott Machine. Here we go, two seconds, final play. What will they do with it? Sullivan takes, he's going to throw a pass, cocks the arm, cocks the arm, and throws it up for grabs. Smith couldn't get it at the 36. Gary Smith, intended receiver, covered there by James Smith of Jackson on defense, number 85. It is halftime at Withington Stadium. Okay. So both teams depart from the gridiron here. It's been pretty much of a lopsided event with uh, Lumen Christie and pretty well having its way. They got six. And uh, we're awful proud of them. Well, Herb's got a, a real good football team going this year and all of his coaches and the assistant staff. What about going into winter athletics? We talked to Dennis Kiley earlier at Jackson High. They were really excited about some of their things that are going on in the winter. What do you think at Lumen Christie? How's that going to be? Well, I'm very optimistic. If things look nice. Uh, the uh, coach, Mike Ramker, has got a fine group coming in with varsity uh, basketball. New coaches in uh, Chris Davis for the junior varsity. Sean Spittler will be working with the freshmen. Fine groups overall. Uh, uh, we've got a nice schedule ahead of us. We look forward to uh, playing some of the competitors. Sure. Now, this is your first year as the athletic director taking over from Herb Rogan. What's been the biggest surprise or uh, uh, the thing on the job that uh, has, has kind of been the most important thing that you've done so far, Luma Christie? Well, I've, I've known Herb for quite some time, and I'm, I was quite familiar with a lot of the things that Herb had to do as an athletic director. He helped me out an awful lot as I got started, but there are an awful lot of things that just happen to you know, come up that you haven't been familiar with, but because of Herb and Julie Crowley, the administrative assistant, things have worked out real well. I think... I thought we were in hostile territory, but I can see we're surrounded by the Titan Band. Yeah, that's uh, great. Nice to be. Okay, well, listen, Dick, thanks for being with us tonight. Continued success as the AD at Lumen Christie, and good luck with all the sports in the winter. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. That's Richard Corso, the athletic director at Lumen Christie High School. Tom, we're going to send it back, but bring it back to us because I want to talk with the head basketball coach at Jackson High, Andy Sheridan. So well, let's go right back to Ed Roman and TOC. Okay, John. Thank you very much. Well, the 84 championship game is not history. It is history through halftime. And it's 28 nothing as the Jackson High marching band parades down here in the gridiron. Our next interview will be with a good friend of mine. And uh, John Salah will have him on with us in a moment. Young man who was a great player. Not only a fine basketball player, high school-wise and collegiately, but also a tremendous baseball player. And I mean a good one. And John Salab is down below, and when those lights go on, we'll go down there to Andy Sheridan. Okay, come in, John. Okay, Ed and Tom, thanks again. With me right now is the head boys basketball coach at Jackson High, Andy Sheridan. Andy, a great season last year for the boys basketball team. You won the district and went all the way to the regional championship game. What are, what are we going to expect to see from the Vikings in the 80-45 season? Well, John, of course, we lost uh, our... Uh, best basketball player I think we've ever had here, Gary Tompkins, and two other starters. Uh, it's going to be a rebuilding year, but we got some good kids coming back. We're not real big, but we're going to be quick. Well, you know, last year you weren't that big either, but that quickness was the hallmark of the Jackson High team. What can we expect to see as far as some of your personnel this year? Well, uh, of course, we got Maurice Poole returning. I think Maurice is one of the best players in the state, and we have uh, Freddie Parker up front uh, on the boards. Uh, this is the first year since I've been coaching. I really don't know for sure yet what the other three spots are going to be. They're wide open. When do you get a chance to start working out, and uh, what's, the, what's the first game look like? Well, we, uh, we can start the 12th, 
and uh, we our first game is December 7th up at Grand Rapids Central. Uh, they've got a lot of kids returning. We beat them pretty good last year down here, but they'll be a good test. Great. Well, listen, we've got to get these indoor sports going. It's just too darn cold out here tonight. Oh, it's terrible out here tonight. Okay. Thanks for talking with us, Andy. Good luck this year. We look forward to seeing you on some of our summit games. Thank you, John. Okay, Andy Sheridan, the head boys basketball coach at Jackson High School. And I'll tell you, warm the truck up, get the hot chocolate or coffee going because it is downright cold out here. The synthetic surface that uh, hopefully they'll be able to replace later this year, maybe even in the next year if the fundraising drive is successful, it, they're just about going to need it. It is frozen, it's cold, and I'll tell you what, when you're Jackson High and you're down 28 to nothing, it's a whole lot colder. Lumen Christie looks like they're wrapping up a great season, but we're going to see if Jackson High's got something left in this second half, see if they can't get back into this ballgame. That's going to take care of our sideline report. We look forward to talking to you from right down here for our postgame report, but for leading you into the rest of the second half, let's go back upstairs to Ed Roman and TOC. Okay, John, thank you very much. The Jackson I marching band printing down below our Channel 4 microphone in the final seven plus minutes until the two gladiators come out and uh, try to solve it again in the second half. Possibly Lumen Christie has solved a good hunk of it with the 28 nothing lead. They have a shutout at the intermission. Stats will show they about played them. Jackson I, as I say, have made some errors that haven't helped them. And Lumen Christie has capitalized on those. But aside from that, uh, Lumen surely has dominated in this football game through the first two periods. As I mentioned, as far as the attendance tonight's concerned, it is down, I would have to say, on both sides. The, the Lumen Christie turnout is surely good. Jackson and I turn out good. But for some reason, we don't have the attendance that we anticipated, namely in the vicinity of seven. 7 to 7,500 to 8,000. You know, out here years ago, 1945 or 46, it might have been 44, I talked to John O'Connor, the Citizen Pat, and they had better than 10,000 jammed in here. The old stadium, same place, the old stadium, when St. Mary's played St. John. So it can happen and should happen again. Let's put our microphones to the portals and pick up the very fine marching band of the Jackson High.
Back here on TV Row at Worthington Stadium, the Jackson High Marching Band uh, will be parting from their very fine performance here in the gridiron. Both teams should be coming back up in a very short while. In fact, we have 2.25 on the clock before we are scheduled to be swing into the second half of play. Football through this campaign, thanks to John LaFere Ford, the winning combination. For a brand new one or a used one, how about the Hunt Club out in Wildwood? Truly enjoy yourself there, fine food, sandwiches, short orders, long orders, satellite TV. The Bob's Country Store with two locations. In fact, they're on Horton Road, also Spring Arbor Road. Scott Machine. The West Point Lounge, where we make available on Channel 4 our playback of high school football through the year. White Chicken Little with three locations in Jackson. Well, they have fish over there, too. Don't get me wrong. They have quite a menu. And the Jackson Co-op Federal Credit Union. Check with them. They're on East Michigan Avenue. Check on their fine loan rates and also the fact you can join that uh, Jackson Co-op Federal Credit Union. The Jackson Eye is on the field. They're down by 28. They know what they have to do, but the big thing is, will they be able to do it? Now, these stats that Roman, you gave me, Lumen Christie, nine first down, Jackson Eye, four. They're rushing 89 yards against 40. So the imbalance is not great. Uh, passing four for 10 for 43 yards. Actually, Jack and I, as we told you, as we joined you tonight on the uh, TV lane, probably wouldn't throw unless they had to. There were a couple of situations where, frankly, I thought they would throw. In fact, they did try to throw one time. They ruled out a bump, which I thought might have been a bum call, but on the other end, that's why I'm here. Uh, turnovers, the Vikings have had three turnovers, and you have to believe they're, they were costly ones. Not the difference in the 28-0 lead, but uh, let's say that it might have stalled Christie as far as our offense is concerned. But when you're given the ball with a Christie offense is as uh, lightning-like as it is, and the fact it's so versatile and they can run and pass and you name it, uh, you just can't give them the ball inside the 30 or 35, which of course jacked into a couple of occasions. Consequently, Newman Christie moved in and scored, and thus it's a 28-0 lead here at halftime, Ed. Uh, Tom, uh, the press box crew uh, still talking about that uh, fair catch uh, uh, penalty, which uh, everyone here, we're not quite sure, but we are sure that uh, was assessed wrong. And the, I guess the irony of the thing, Tom, is that the same crew uh, headed by Ron Ostrike, who is the baseball coach at Eastern Michigan University, uh, is heading up this crew. And uh, everybody's still in wonderment and feeling that Jackson High... Uh, came out on the short end of it uh, and what it ended up being is uh, Christie uh, again had a short distance to go for the touchdown I think the stats uh, as you said not overwhelming but again as we talked about it in the second quarter uh, Jackson High's three turnovers gave Christie possession where they uh, I don't think they've had a drive much more than 50 yards uh, if they've had that so uh, the Titans uh, taking advantage as they have all year of their opponents mistakes and uh, Jackson High still struggling to get an offense back there, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see Tom. Uh, Tom Stobie has to be almost uh, driven to desperation here to, to put the ball in the air to uh, get some sort of thing going here offensively and get back in this ball game. Uh, how he's going to do it uh, is beyond us. Uh, David Wolf, of course, uh, tried a few passes against Sexton last week. Was not. Uh, uh, successful, or that successful, I should say. He has uh, tried a few from the rollout position, and uh, the uh, Vikings uh, are going to have to uh, come up with something. It is 28 nothing. Jackson High on the short end of the count. Lumen Christie in front. And we're about ready as both teams now will move out of the gridiron to play it off here in the, the second half. Jackson and I will need the comeback. Obviously, they're down by 28. They will have to turn the ball over. I say turn it over. They have to kick it uh, to Christie. And Mike Knowles will kick it off. And Lumen Christie will be downfield to receive. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to pick up the uh, radio call from KHM Radio. 
Right. Greg O'Connor, Ken Dillon, and John Manger. Greg will call it here at least for a good portion of the third period. We go back to the early days or the later days. Christie down to receive. Jackson will kick off, and let's go to Greg. Win tonight. The Titans are eight and one. But uh, very, very doubtful, highly doubtful that uh, they will get in the playoffs, even with a win here this evening. And Jackson High, of course. They have been struggling all season long after that uh, opening victory over the Northwest Mounties. Being joined in the uh, third quarter by the Summit Leone television crew here tonight on 970. Glad to have them aboard. Here's a run back for Lumen on this uh, kickoff by Brian Merzwa, one of the up men, and he punches it out to the 40-yard line, so the Titans have some uh, fairly decent field position from the 40. They start out first and 10 and lead in the football game 28-0. Don't see any changes right now for the Titans. They will start with their number one offense. That is to be expected. They line up in a power eye formation. Tommy Sullivan calls the play, hands it off to the tailback who burrows out to about the 44-yard line, that being number 22, uh, Brian Kelly. Kelly... The 155-pound senior picks up about four yards, and the Titans look at a second and six. Lance Lamb, along with Steve Crittenden, in on the stop for Jackson High. Both have played outstanding games tonight in that Jackson defense, and they've been on the field an awful long time. So that offense has been able, unable to do a thing. Here's a, just a straight buck off left tackle. That looked like Andy LaFear. They slipped Andy into the backfield. No, that was Brian Kelly, and he's out to the 47. A pickup of three, and the Titans have a third down and three. John Richards in the middle. The uh, senior defensive tackle made the play for Jackson High. Third down and three for Lumen. Sullivan has not uh, thrown the ball too much tonight. The Titans basically have had plenty of success on the ground, and there really has been no need to throw the football that much. Here's the, the third down running play to Vanderveen, and he has uh, stopped short of a first down by Steve Crittenden. There's little Erwin Kendrick. He's always in that pile somewhere. Sometimes you can't find him down there, but he's usually there. And Vanderveen looks like he's going to be stopped about a half yard shy of a first down. And I certainly don't think, Ken, that the Titans will kick here. No, I think they're going to go for it, Greg. Just while we got a minute, we've mentioned before uh, Dr. Niekamp, which has uh, been a, a very good supporter of Lumen Christie, but also I was informed here last, last night that Dr. Buslip does just an excellent job for Jackson High traveling with the team and so on and, and is there with them all the time. So we salute both of those two doctors. Fourth down quarterback keep by Sullivan and it depends where they spot the football. I'll tell you, he didn't get much. Tried to follow Larry Postel into the heart of the line and the Vikings came up pretty big there. And they may have to bring in the chains across the way. Sullivan needed only a half yard, Kenny, and it, yeah, where they spotted the football right now from our vantage point, it's right in front of us here at the 50-yard line. Looks like they have a first and 10. GOC with Ken Dillon, John Manzer here on 970 WKHM. We're being joined here in the third quarter by our crew from uh, Summit Leone Cable Television. Glad to have, have them along with us. And the Summit Leone uh, replay broadcast of this game, by the way, will be coming up Sunday night at 7 p.m. If you were unable to make it out tonight, good crowd, but uh, I'll tell you, many of them have left this facility at halftime. We have about, uh, what, 21 degrees on the uh, Ken Dillon thermostat back here, and it's a chilly one. And we lost a few tonight at halftime. Sullivan fakes, back to pass, fires wide open. Tony Smith has a first down, breaks the tackle, 35-30. He's still on his feet. He's down to the 25. He's still on his feet, inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. And there's brilliant running by that young tight end. Well, Greg, uh, a lot of times the uh, Jackson probably uh, looking for Sullivan to go to, uh, to Jerry Smith. And uh, this time, uh, uh, Tommy finds uh, a couple times he's find Tony, found Tony Smith, which is Jerry's brother, open. And just an excellent gain. He made some excellent yardage. Looked like he was going to be pushed out of bounds and cut back a couple times and has taken the ball down about the 19 and a half yard line. A junior at 185 pounds, Tony Smith, after making that reception, showing some excellent running ability. Here's Sullivan faking back to pass. He looks, he fires long, wide open, touchdown, Brian Kelly. 
out of the backfield. And Sullivan put it right on the numbers. Number 22, Brian Kelly hauls it in. And the Titans of Lumen Christie make it look oh so easy. And they jump up 34 nothing. Sullivan just went back to pass. He actually had two receivers flooding this uh, near side of the field. And Jackson only had one defender, and he went for the short man. Kelly popped loose at about the five-yard line. And he was all by his lonesome. Danny Schaefer in for the extra point. He's missed his last two. Spot is down. The kick is up. This one looks good. It is. And Lumen Christie leads Jackson high. 35 nothing. still 9.14 left to go. Here in the third quarter, we'll be back with the Titan kickoff in 60 seconds. Well, back here at Withington Stadium, we'll uh, rejoin Greg here in just a moment, in about a minute for that matter. 9.14, that's the time, of course, uh, as Greg called it. Sullivan hit Tony Smith, a great up referee, caught that pass. He straddled the far sideline. And then Sullivan threw that ball to Brian Kelly, who was uh, wide open on the reception, going into the, in fact, he caught the ball in the end zone. At 34, Schaefer conversion, 35 nothing. as this ball game has turned into, into a route at the moment, unless these Vikings can come back, and I mean come back in a hurry, at the 9-14 point. So the kickoff from the 40-yard line, as the Vikings will be on the receiving end, let's go back to Greg O'Connor. On uh, Cyblecast, uh, Radio KHM, and some of the only Channel 4. James Smith returned for Jackson. He was tackled by 52 and Schaefer. Lumen Christie leading here, and plenty of time left in this second half. Dan Schaefer, the kicker, makes the stop on Jim Smith. So the Viking offense, if you want to call it that, has been rather non existent tonight. We'll have it at the 28 yard line. and They've only had a couple first downs in the game. One via penalty. They run it out of the wishbone. McCluskey, the fullback. They give it off to uh, McCluskey, and he drives up for just a couple yards, maybe hit the 30-yard line. Big Tom Berg down there for the Titans. And uh, Merzla in the middle. And I'll tell you, there'll be some tough, tough running out here in the second half for Jackson High. They just have had absolutely an inability to throw the football after losing their top two quarterbacks, uh, Dave Klima and Scott Nearpass. And uh, Dave Wolf uh, has certainly done a commendable job, but uh, Dave's a fullback. He's not a quarterback. Flags fly again and looks like motion on Jackson one more time. That's six or seven times tonight, Ken. They're, they're not even getting the count. No, I noticed a couple of times, and, and the flag wasn't even throwing that uh, one of the right tackles or the right guard is jumping off sides. That time the official caught that. Uh, looks like they're going pretty quick, and uh, now they're going to be moved back for five yards. It's, uh, Christy definitely has been throwing, controlling the line of scrimmage, and this is what makes a difference. Uh, uh, Jackson just cannot... Uh, maintain anything they got down there in the 10-yard line if they could have scored it might have been a ball game but they're they're just they're just uh scrambling a little bit and trying to find something that will work here comes a pass right now but okay wolf's gonna run it 25 30 good move still on his feet 35 up near the 40-yard line and he'll be close to a first down and then he was leveled by jerry smith on the sideline excellent run by david wolf as ken mentioned uh, dropping back to pass there and uh, the, the receiver, who I believe was Smith, had about three people hanging on him. And then Smith came back through a pretty good block. And Dave Wolf uh, zigzagged his way out to the 38-yard line in the first and 10. Jackson, uh, once again, showing that wishbone offense. Here's the handoff. Fullback bucks it up. Off right tackle up to the 45-46-yard line. Kevin McCluskey. We stop by Larry Postel, the linebacker. Let's set that Titan defense quickly. Haynes, Bustle, Merz, Waskowski, Bollinger up front. We'll also see Berg in there. The linebackers, a good core. Tim Johnson, the uh, Titan back. Mike O'Neill, the middle linebacker. And Larry Postel, who plays the weak side. And out in the secondary, Smith, Sullivan, Iuni, Babcock. Here's a handoff to the young sophomore who scoots up. 
second effort. Looks Well, he had a first down, then he went backwards, and he was snowed under by Haynes, that being Corey Pryor. Now, Kenny, he had a first down up at the 49. He was hit. And I, I think he lost his, his uh, sense of direction. He went the wrong way, and Haynes nailed him back at the 46-yard line. So actually, they uh, might have lost a half yard. But just a youngster, and uh, definitely looks like a very good prospect for Jackson. And that time, he probably figured, well, maybe he could spring loose and, and make it. But he did have the first down and, and kind of backed up a little bit, and that's why he ended up with about a yard short. Third down, they need two and a half. Pryor cuts it up and dives, and he may have a first down on second effort. Pryor looked like he wanted to go outside. He was shut off there. Babcock came up well, turned the play in, and Pryor dives for what is a Jackson first down at the 49-yard line. So the Vikings punch out a couple first downs here, trailing in the football game, 35 nothing, with 6.25 to go here in the third quarter. On 970 WKHM and Summit Leone Cable Television. From the Jackson 49, we have movement, both teams, no flags, and drilled in the backfield is little Dwayne Kirkland. Boy, did he pay the price. O'Neal, Johnson, Ayuni, and Big Bird. Second down and 14, a loss of four on that play. Six minutes to go here in the third quarter with the Titans well on their way to an eight and one campaign for 1984. Their only slip up was week number two when they lost to Bishop Gallagher. Out of the wishbone, Wolf fakes to the fullback, carries it down the line. Look out, Dave, he carries it like a loaf of rye. Almost had it stripped away. The Titans stopped the play at the 48-yard line. Wolf picking up maybe two yards. Berg and Haynes. Mike Haynes, a big 220-pound uh, senior, and uh, Tom Berg about the same size for LC in on that play with the clock showing 5.15 to go here in the third. Jackson coming up third and 12. Hand off to Pryor. He will eat it back at the 43-yard line as Mike Skelski shot through the defensive tackle. He came in uh, like a freight train through there that uh, he was really not even hit, Kenny. It looked like nobody touched Big Mike. He just come right through there, and as, as soon as Pryor got the ball, he was hit, and uh, that's what you got to do to a guy like Pryor because he's got some speed and some moves, and you got to get, get him before he, he gets around you, and that's the time what happened. Skelski got in the backfield. He almost looked like he was in there, Jackson backfield. He was in there so fast. Nobody touched him at all. He was in there and, and made a great defensive uh, play. Mike Knowles will kick it away for Jay High. Stands back at his 30. Lumen with Bell and Kelly. They run a fake kick. That will go nowhere. And Lumen Christie will take over. They snap to the up back. That being uh, Irwin Kendrick. And uh, the Titans smelled that out with uh, Dan Schaefer along with Mike O'Neill in on the stop. And Denny Lodice also for Lumen Christie. So great field position again for the Titans at the J-High 44-yard line, leading 35-0. Titans come out with Sullivan at quarterback, slot back right side, running out of the eye formation. Tom back to pass. Oh, he has the man open. He throws. It's caught. 30-25, down to the 20. And that was a tight end Tony Smith again. Sullivan just got that pass away before he was nailed by Shelfont and he hit Tony Smith, and this Tony Smith has really turned into quite a receiver. Oh, he's an excellent receiver. He just hasn't been throwing too much to before because with uh, his brother and, uh, and a couple of the other receivers, but he's just, uh, uh, he's only a junior. He'll be back next year, and uh, he, he'll get you those yards. Uh, he's an excellent ball player, just also a good defensive player, which he hasn't had that much opportunity this year to play. Scott Vanderveen in now for Lumen. Here's the pitch back to Todd Bell going around the weak side. And he'll be uh, cracked out of bounds at about the 18-yard line. The old student body right there, just the straight pitch to Todd Bell. Steve Crittenden and Gene Hurd up to make the stop. Hurd, another one of the youngsters uh, up from the Jackson High uh, decimated JV team that they had to dismantle with a couple weeks left in the season because they just didn't have the numbers. Second down and uh, seven. 
Sullivan. Two fakes back to pass. He looks. Tommy cranks it over the middle. That pass is deflected incomplete down at the six-yard line. Intended for uh, Tony Smith again. Uh, Mike Shuttler deflected that ball, and it dropped down near the goal line as the Titans had four people out on that pattern. And we may well see that, uh, have them throw again, or see them throw again, I should say. Third down and seven. And now for the uh, folks at Summit Leone, we're going to take you back upstairs, TOC and Ed Roman. We're going to throw again. Okay, Greg, thanks a lot. Good job. Third seven. Here's Todd Bell. Right, cuts left. He's still on his feet. He's got running room, gets one block. He's coming wide, the 15, a down to the 15-yard line. I'd carry that ball about a mile for no yardage on that play. The Lumen Christie Titans throwing here. Smith made the stop. Ball rests between the 15 and the 16 yard line with 3.11 to go in the third period. Lumen on top, 35 0. <coughs> Last year, of course, this Viking, not the same Viking football team, but Jackson and I won in triple overtime. Full house back there with uh, Tom Sullivan mixing up, but surprisingly throwing. He's back to throw again. He's right. He rolls. He throws, and he hits his man complete, and he is out of bounds. Where, Ed Roman? Across the way around the three or the four-yard line. Sullivan throwing here with the 35-0 lead. Vanderbeen pulled that in. They'll spot the ball around the five or the four. <laughs> 243 to go of course if you throw a lot and surprisingly the, the titans have uh, you don't use up too much time in fact if they've had the ball that has been the story they've mixed up their plays but they have thrown so they're down around the four or the five of the first down play right keeps he throws into the end zone it is what he juggled the ball. He may have held it, but it dropped away, or he stepped out of bounds. The rule incomplete forward pass. And Sullivan took a step back, winged it into the end zone. Near completion, but incomplete. It'll be second down from between the four and the five yard line. John LaPier for the winning combination with us. Uh, football campaign, the Hunt Club on Wildwood. Bob Potts, the Generalissimo out there at Bob's Country Store on Horton Road and Spring Arbor Road, Scott Machine. Member of industry and supporting local sports, Scott Machine, second down four. Handoff over the middle, drive, drive, drives in, four yards, touchdown. No kidding about the tally there. Vandeveen carried that ball. Or no, it was Kelly. Brian Kelly, 22, rather, and it's a 41 to nothing ball game in the third period. I don't know what the record is, Ed Roman, in this series. I don't have the book with me tonight. In fact, I don't know where the book is, but I'd have to believe they're getting close. Uh, to a record with this 41 than the fact that we have uh, two and a half minutes to go in the third period another quarter of play it is highly possible we'll smash something before this night's over and I mean that figuratively of course we're not going to smash anything but uh, the record might be broken snap back kicks I don't think he'll get this one nope the ball was uh, mishandled there and juggled by uh, Ione and no chance to get that ball up so it is a 41 nothing game of Lumen Christie rolling on top. White Chicken Little with relocation to Jackson hosting football for the 84 campaign. And uh, as I mentioned, you want to check in, call Monday, the Jackson Co op Federal Credit Union, and ask them about uh, joining up. I'll tell you, good deal there. Two and a half minutes, it's 41 zip. City Championship game will be back in the channel. Renault and Jackson is having their biggest sale ever. And that means you save money three ways. First, you can get any new 84 Ford for only $49 over factory invoice. Then, Ford Motor Credit will finance any 84 Escort or Tempo at 11.9%. And finally, buy any new 84 and receive a free Florida vacation. Three great ways to save in half fun from John LaFear Ford and Jackson. But you better hurry. They're going fast. 
Is your financial future out of focus? We'll make things clearer for you at Jackson Co-op Federal Credit Union. We offer share drafts and share accounts that pay 6% compounded quarterly. We offer over 60 options in money market certificates and individual retirement accounts. Let our experts design a program personally tailored for you. We have money to loan for any good reason, and most importantly, you can join today. For a clearer look into your financial future, see Jackson Co-op Federal Credit Union, where financial excellence is a reality able to score in the game. Here's the kick. Bounces around. Finally, it's fielded back there, fielded by Smith. Smith chased, and he's going to be in a gang tackle. Well, he is, and he gets away from two, but you can't get away from five. That's what Art Jones told me. That's the, what he said on the cue card here, and the ball is up in the 16. Jackson I, first and 10. Ioka, the tackle, Tom, uh, uh, among many, and it's been, uh, Smith has uh, spun and and uh, tried to sidestep, but uh, still came up short at about the 16-yard uh, line. 2.25 remaining here in the third period, and the Titans rolling. Uh, an another quarterback in there, number 20, 24, Eric Copeland, is in there at quarterback, Tom. I, he's the uh, JV quarterback. There'll be a penalty, a walk-off against Lumen Christie. Uh, personal foul, I believe, uh, on the play. So it moves the ball up to the Viking 31, uh, Copeland, the quarterback, and here we go, first down and 10. 5-4-2 defense deployed here, wishbone by the Vikings, uh, Copeland in the handoff, that play will get him a couple, and he does bang his way across the 36-yard line. Kevin McCluskey, the ball carrier, out to the 36. As the Titans are playing defense at the moment, Rusty Ione, number seven at the bottom, made the turn for us, gain of five yards, second down and five. In a minute 54, the clock running at Withington, we're still in the third period. Well, it has been a long one here in the third. 41 nothing, Lumen on top, Copeland handoff, fumble, recovery Jackson back in the 37. Husky fumbled, but the Vikings had a man on the ball at the 37. Burns uh, pounced on that ball, so it'll be a third down. Tom Berg, 70, covered it third down and four from the 37. Jackson, I uh, should like to say face a bit here if they could get on that board, regardless of how many more points Lumen scores if they do. Copeland bumps into his own man. Keeps it, he didn't pitch it, he had a man back to pitch it to, but didn't throw it, and they kept the ball and they got nothing for it. Larry Postel, they hit, by only in there with him. That Ione's done the job defensively, too, at Roman of this ball game. It'll be fourth and four, and you're down by 41, you just don't know whether they'll kick it. Well, he's back there. Uh, I don't think uh, they'll try that uh, fake punt again, uh, although they might uh, still try to get something on the board. Well, yeah, I've got to believe they're going to kick it away. Scoops it up and kicks. High kick up the middle. Pretty good punt. Ball grabbed back there by Todd Bell. Looks for running room. Won't find any. He doesn't either. He's hit at the 35. Bell nailed at the 35-yard line where Luke and Christie will take over. First and 10. They lead here to the tune of 41 nothing. And the final seconds. Shelfont was in there for the Vikings on the tackle in the play, getting Todd Bell in his track at the 35. And I frankly thought it might be a fair catch call. It was not. So we're in the last 28 seconds of the third period of the championship game here at 84, and Lumen riding to a victory unless there's a miracle comeback in the stadium. Steve Johnson to the right. Sullivan hands off. Dive, and he's out to the 40, 41, maybe 42. Brian Kelly, the ball carrier. For the 42 before Critton and then Kendrick came in for Jackson to stop him. Now there it is, the end of, it is officially the end of a very long uh, third period. So one quarter to go on the 84 campaign will come to an end. Victorious end apparently for Lumen. Uh, Jackson's down here, 41 nothing. Ed? Tom Lumen, Christie, I believe now will be uh, sending in his, uh, Herb Brogan sending in his uh, second and third groups now. And uh, Todd Bell, I believe, will quarterback this group uh, as we saw last week against Muskegon Catholic, he, he was in for about three or four plays and uh, ran the option quite a bit. Uh, so we may see some of that on this uh, 
series of downs. Quarterback now is number one. Tom Bell looks pretty good back there at quarterback. The time we saw him, uh, as you mentioned, Ed, uh, they did use him last week, as sparingly true. Well, I believe he did come in in the fourth turn of that ball game. First, Lumen rolled over them. Second down, three yards to go at the 41. Fourth period underway as Lumen Christie is rolling to a win. Tailback gets it, breaks to the front back, and he got a hard earned yard to the 42. That was Andy LaFear. Andy's been a good runner for this Lumen team this year. Andy has not been a starter, but he's been in quite a bit. And when he's got the call, he has usually responded well. It'll be a third down and three for Christie from their own 42. Bell front back through, bangs his way across the 44 to the 45. He'll be up to at least the 45 yard line. Oh, Bullinger picks up a couple. Mike had played offensively uh, the early part of the year, first few games, Ed. Then uh, we didn't hear too much from Mike, but we have heard a lot from him defensively. But now that the reserve car is in, they're using him in the backfield, fourth and one. Fourth down and one, the ball up on the Titan 44. A keep? Nope, he didn't. He faked off, and he's got his man through there to midfield, about 49. Well, Mike Bullinger bangs his way up to a Lumen Christie, first and ten. On their own 49 as the football season slowly but surely comes to an end. When I say football season, I'm not referring to the collegians or the pros, but the high school year will end here for the seniors, of course, and the football team's period. There's neither team will be in the playoff. First and ten. There's a keeper, and it's Todd Bell wide, and Bell bangs into a couple of tackers at the 47. Todd Bell on a keep. He faked into the line. Roll right. Had a block, but couldn't do much with that one. Boltheis made the stop on it for the Vikings at the 40. Call it the 40, 46. So Bell picked up uh, five yards. Second down and five. Well, some fans, and you might understand it, have departed from Willigan Stadium. They probably have seen by this this time the night, probably the handwriting on the wall, but that's the way it goes sometimes. I bet you can do about it. Hand off, playoff tackle, and he drives to the 42. Brian Kelly still in there, or was it no Andy LaFear 32 to the 42? I guess you'd say that slower, right in short end. I got that in a telephone call a couple of days ago. I We'll say that again. Andy LaPierre, number 32, went to the Viking 42. Okay, we get through that one. Third down and one. Oh, Jackson High on defense, and they have had a workout in this one. Bell fakes, keeps, turns, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds just above the line of scrimmage at the 42 down below in front of the Viking bench. And Dave Wolf is the young man who came across to bring him down. Dave Fine, defensive ball player. He starred surely last year in that triple overtime victory that the Vikings picked up. We may have a timeout. They're going to bring the chain crew in from the far side of the playing field. What they're going to do. So they'll take the uh, measurement here as... This fourth quarter is at the nine-minute mark. That'll be when the clock runs down, as I say, officially the end of the 84 uh, football season. Some clubs will be fortunate, of course, those who have the point totals to move into postseason play. In the area, Grass Lake uh, surely has a shot at Kinston, what they did tonight. When I'm referring to tonight, I'm referring to the live time of this game, namely on uh, Friday. This is our TV replay tonight. Well, that game is history, and hopefully that Grass Lake, the Warriors made it. First and ten. Looming the ball on the Jackson I-41. Wishbone for him. Bell fakes, fakes, keeps. They collaborate on him. Couple tacklers. He gets through a couple and a good effort, but there's a marker drop at the 37. Two Vikings were right on him. Had him sandwiched in there, Ed, but for some reason he was able to get through, but they dropped a marker at the uh, about the 36. The legal procedure against Lumen Christie is Bell uh, uh, as Tom said, almost nailed in the backfield, but uh, with his quick feet, uh, got a five-yard gain, but that'll be nullified here by a five-yard penalty on...
Christie, we've got 9-12 remaining in this ball game. And uh, Christie sh shuffling uh, players in there now. Rob Ioka's in that backfield. Uh, uh, number 84, Wade Zaggy's in there. Kip uh, Cunningham has been in there, number 80. And uh, is and Andy LaFere and uh, I believe Scott Holt is in there at the up back now. Here's Bell keeps, he pitches it back and uh, out of bounds across the 40. Andy LaFere across the 40 and knocked that out of bounds down below in front of the banking bench again. Bull ties 84 on the bottom for the Viking. Viking getting a big workout. As I say, the defense surely has been in quite a span in this game. Ball on the 38. Clock showing 8.50 to go. Jackson defense looming the ball. Second seven. And to host the changes because of the differential in the tally here. 41 nothing looming. Bella keep handed off. They tackled him, but he didn't have the ball. The play got him across the 35 to 34. Scott Hole, the ball carrier, number 46. To the 34-yard line as Lumen Christie rolls with their reserve unit in. Interchanging three and four players at a shot, but they're still able to move it. And they're down to the Viking 34. They have a third down and three from that point. Todd Bell fakes, Todd Bell keeps, looks, he pitches the ball away. He's got uh, uh, LaFerre with the ball. He's across the 30 to the, about the 29. They dropped a flag at the 32-yard line. They both made the stop, but the marker was dropped, so they'll bring that football back. I would say they will, and they're going to. I think a procedure call against uh, Ruben Christie. Notifies the pickup there, and obviously they'll assess the penalty as the mark was dropped at the 32. And we'll see where they finally stop, and they stop at the 39. Eight fifteen to go in the championship game as Lumen is rolling to the 84 win. He just beamed in. They lead 41 to nothing here at Withington. And the Titans now back out again with a third down, eight yards to go from the uh, Viking 39. Bell fakes, he keeps, he throws a pass, incomplete. Intended there at the 31-yard line. Cunningham. Cunningham, the intended receiver. But incomplete. It'll be a fourth down, eight yards to go. Of course, Lumen can do whatever they want to in a situation like this. Uh, I would say, obviously, they will not punt it, all 39. Fourth down eight. Clock says now 7.49. It's the time to go in the game. And they set up with wide outs right and left. Bell's going to throw it. No, he's going to pitch it. He does. He goes to Lafeer. Lafeer down the field. He goes 30, 25, 20. Lafeer to the 15. Lafeer to the 10. Lafeer to the 5. And he's dragged out around the 2 of the 3 yard line. Andy Lafeer broke loose on that pitch. There was a rollout. Todd Bell left. And he pitched the ball to Andy, and Andy was off to the racetrack. He got down to the 5-4-3 yard line, Ed. Uh, excellent uh, judgment there by Todd Bell. He waited until that uh, defensive man had committed himself and uh, pitched that ball almost forward. And uh, Lafeer also made a nice run, broke out of the grass with one tackler around the 20, and uh, just kept moving. So Lumen Christie's a couple of yards away from tacking something on to the 41 they own. 41 nothing. From the three, Bell handoff, play, Buck Marker dropped back at the eight. Oh, so it was dropped, actually dropped in the backfield of Lumen. Rob Ioka, the ball carrier, and the penalty would be assessed against the Lumen Christie. You know, a guy say, some two say it, when ball games end like this, they say, well, they poured it on. Not really. I, uh, some might question the fact that Sullivan was throwing at that big lead, but they may have had personal reasons for that. I say personal reasons. It might possibly refer to the a passing mark of some dimension. That truly is highly possible. But uh, you put reserves in a ball game, and you can't say, well, don't score. You know, these kids want to hit. They want to score. They want to play. No matter who's winning this football game, whether it's Lumen Christie or Jackson I or you name it. 
They're running now with a first down. They got that back, but they tack five and they three, so it's first down eight. And that's where they are at the eight yard line. Christie calling time, her broken coming out. We have seven football minutes of time to go in the 84 football campaign, Ed. Tom, I don't know, as you said, uh, whether there was some records in question. I do know that Tom was close to a couple of, uh, I believe, Chris Conklin's passing records, whether it was touchdown passes or total yardage or uh, whatever it was. Uh, uh, it was a little unusual for him to be throwing, but uh, I'm sure that... Uh, was a good reason. I don't think uh, you don't run it up on your city rival or your big rival uh, unless he's 100 miles away or so because uh, you don't see him. You got to run. You got to cross <laughs> the street. Don't put with him on your guys. schedule. <laughs> That's right. And uh, Christy uh, definitely running him in and out now, and uh, just uh, a fine run by Andy Lafleur got him there, and he's still in that backfield. Uh, uh, I don't know whether Todd Bell was confused by the defense or what, but he got up to the line of scrimmage, uh, saw something that didn't uh, ring true, and uh, called timeout. So well, here we go. All right, Ed, here we go. All right. It, it will be, uh, well, seven minutes to go. Let's, let's say that and leave it there. Ball the eight. Here's Bell on a drawer, and he doesn't get anywhere. I think that play was stopped right there on the eight-yard line. Stopped right there at the eight. They've been shoveling in backs on us, so consequently we may delay at times on picking up the ball carrier as they have really shot him in here in the last uh, several minutes, but that ball's back in the eighth. Darrell Duffield, I believe, was on that carry, Tom. But if you wore a uniform tonight, in blue and Christie uniform, I would have to believe you probably played. Here's a pitch fumble back there, and he dives on it back in the 19. Ioka fumbled it, but made the recovery, but back around the 19, Shelfon covered him, number 72, so it'll be a third down coming up from the, about the 18. Six minutes to go in the game. Well, this will long be a good series, and surely it's always been good. I think good friendship all told between these two schools, as far as I know it, coaching cores all the way to the administrative people. Third down, 19. Bell's going to wing one. He's back to pass. He does throw it. And almost intercepted at the 13-yard line. A Viking had his hands on that ball, but could not hold on. That was uh, Boltheis. Went up, but dropped the ball at the 13. So that gives the, the Titans life, if I can use that term, with the fourth and 19. That's exactly what they have here as the clock shows five minutes and 50 seconds of time to go in the game. TOC with Ed Roman. John Salab, Art Jones, and our cast of camera people tonight. I just do not have a card listing those personnel who have worked out in the chill here at the stadium tonight. Rob Ioka deployed wide to the left. They also split to the right. Cunningham to the right. They're in the I formation. They need 19 yards. Bell takes back the pass. It's a pitch. He goes to Ed Lapeer. Lapeer goes wide. 15. Lapeer 10. And Lapeer crosses the 10 down to maybe near the five yard line. Of course, that's insufficient yard. They had to go 19. Well, Andy LaFerre, he's done a good job at Roman this year. You know, we don't see him too much, but when they call his number, he invariably uh, picks it up, and he did it again. He got him down deep before. Of course, they sustained that penalty. Then they had that pitch play that, that backfired, and they lost back to the 19. So Jackson High with 5.43 to go. Uh, if they're entertaining any thoughts of at least getting a score on the board down by 41 nothing, this might be the time to do it, but they have about 95 yards to go in that vicinity as yeah, they're running deep in their own territory. Christie may have more uh, quickness next year in their backfield with Bell and LaFear than they've had uh, in quite a while. I don't know who else will be back there, but I'm sure those two young men are as quick as uh, the Spring Arbor School has seen in quite a while. First down and 10. The ball is actually resting on the seventh, and the markers fly as the ball is handed. No, there'll be a penalty of some dimension here, I would assume. That was Kirkland, Tom, and uh, Jackson High is going to get penalized for uh, having too many men on the field. Well, uh, to use the term, your back's against the wall might be not highly exaggerated, but when you're down about 90 some yards away, or roughly 93, and you're down by 41, and you've got too many men in the field, 
You've got a second down here. The board showing second down and roughly eight yards to go for the Vikings. And they drop the flag again. The flag is dropped again as the officials pick that ball up. We'll see what they rule here. Illegal procedure call. Jackson high again. So that'll be declined. I hope. <laughs> I hope they decline it. 529 to go. Are they or not? Well, they've got that ball down behind the five. They didn't either. It's second down 13, so they did they get that penalty. Believe that. Second down 13. Trying to drive against that Lumen defense has been almost impossible tonight, though they do have their Corey, reserve Corey. core in, but surely you wouldn't know it at this juncture. Murray Pryor, 22, but he got practically nothing. It'll be a third down, 13. 4.50 remains in this football game at Withington. It was 66, Tom. Paul Donnelly uh, made the stop as he led the middle of that Christie defensive line. There were many who came here figuring this might be a 7 to 14 point game and there were some who thought we might see upset but Lumen has put the show on the road and the Vikings are stopped at the five. Corey, or rather Eric Copeland 24 hit there at the five. So Jackson and I unable to do a thing there. Uh, Brian Mears with 24 was on the bottom for Lumen. It'll be a fourth and 12. So uh, this would be more than likely a punt out of the end zone. On the assumption they punt the ball, they're 95 yards away and they're down by 41 points. And Mike Knowles is in. The Lumen may get that football back for what could be their final sojourn of the game. I don't know about that. Four minutes. Knowles stands uh, about a yard from the back line of the end zone. Snap to him and he kicks. It's almost blocked. Kicks it upfield. Bouncing 40. Bouncing 45. Bouncing to the 50. Across the 50. will stop at the 40. 48 or 49. The official dropped the flag. I didn't see the flag in the end zone, Ed. Roughing the kicker penalty, and that's going to hurt. Well, it won't hurt too much, but nevertheless, that is the violation, roughing the kicker. That kick was nearly blocked, Ed, and of course, he went into the kicker, constituting the drop of the flag, and that will revert the play back, and they'll mark the football down, and Jackson and I will have that football again. At time, you've got to get a piece of it, and uh, I don't know who the penalty was on. They're down at that far end. We couldn't get a handle on that number, but uh, Jackson and I have still got life to get on that board. Uh, obviously, they're out of the ball game, but with 3.46 remaining, they've still got a chance to get some points on and uh, avoid that shutout. I'd almost have to believe they'd have to go to the air lanes to get a tally on that board, but they're running that football, and Lumen Christie is stopping them pretty well. They did get a couple of yards on the run. Out to around the 24. In fact, it is. The ball spotted down at the 24-yard line. Well, Dave Tingley, the ball carrier, getting three, and Ludice nailed him. Three minutes to go in the football game. Three minutes. That is all the time. It's been a very long second half. Lumen on top, 41-0. Copeland went to hand it off, keeps it, and he's hit. But the tackle was made behind him, and he fell forward at the 20, about the 28. And that was Lodice again. Denny Lodice in there again for Lumen. Well, they rattle the drums down below. The fans pretty still. Lumen fans surely uh, aware of their team's win. Many fans have departed from the stadium. On both sides of the field, it'll be third down and two. Jackson's ball. Copeland from the 28. Hands it off, play right. Lumen spears the play. No chance to move. Corey Pryor, number 22, got that ball. As he got it, he was hit. They have to go to around the 31-yard line for a first down, and they're sitting here looking at a fourth down and roughly a long two yards. Two minutes and 10 seconds now, the clock running. And Mike Knowles will go back in punt formation, standing back at the moment. He's right there on the 15. Snap to him, and he's gonna kick it away, and he does a high kick, good kick. 
Sailing back to around the 38. Ioka, fair catch call at 38. So Christie's got the ball, first down and 10. A minute and 49 to go in this 1984 high school campaign. Well, it's been a long season. It's been an enjoyable one, uh, covering in the Cascades Conference. John's a lot of most of those games. And, of course, the ball games here at the stadium, including the ball game, of course, we covered out at Western with Bobby Dover. But as things go, uh, and now Christie has changed their quarterback. They've got Babcock in at quarterback for the final few plays of the game. And off, secondary, loose from a tackler, dragging the couple down to across the 50, down to the 47-yard line. Tom, it was number 35, and we don't have a number. He must have been up from the JV's uh, nice run as he carried people with him for about 10 yards. We just saw a shot of Nanook yeah, of the North. People uh, call a young man's name. That's you know, right. He gets, in fact, the matter is a good pickup for him, but... I uh, could call him Arthur Smith or Arthur Jones. I won't try that. I'll leave it alone. First down, 10. Loomer and Christie across midfield at the 47. Well, the Titans now have used offside. They'll throw the flag there, man. I'll tell you, he was off. That was Ioka who jumped. He jumped about five feet before that ball was snapped. But that's uh, surely rather academic at this point. Uh, one minute 18. It will be first and 15 as they'll set that ball back five yards. And they do behind the 50 back at the uh, Lumen 40, 48. Well, things are really quiet here at the stadium. We thought that we might have one of those slam-bang ball games. This person wants to go home. I know the guy's sleeping. No, he isn't either. He's awake. Hand off, and the play blown, almost fumbled, but uh, Lumen still is able to recover the ball of the 48. Has a little uh, bumper pull back there in the backfield. Yeah, it was number 30, Ed Roman, who... That was Tim Johnson, a left linebacker, but he got that ball in the handoff, 47-46. Time for a play or two, and this football game will be a wrap. Somebody spotted somebody going to sleep. Was, was that true, Ed? Stand up, going to sleep, standing up? That's not bad. 35, 34, 33, uh, 31, and uh, we're about done. Hand off, and he's in secondary, and Bob Ioka is all the way down to the Jackson I 40-yard line. It'll be short of a first down. And that clock, I don't believe they'll stop that clock. I can't believe they will. Work by rules, they might have to. The ball to 41. It's down to 12. They won't. They might get the last play in. I don't think they will. They're back at 8. They're down to 7, 6, 5. They're rushing it out, though. 4, 3, and 2, 1. This game is over. The football game is over as Lumen Christie wins it over Jackson I, 41 to nothing. And they are obviously the 1984 Jackson High School football champion. Not only that, they pick up the Wraith win. They've lost but one. That was the Bishop Gallagher, their lone loss of the year. And I've got to believe, Ed, as I mentioned earlier in the telecast tonight, uh, Jackson and I was playing one of the top Class B teams in the state. So I may be criticized for that. If I am, I'll, I'll take it. But I firmly believe they are. And even though they weren't given rankings in the top 20, as Greg O'Connor mentioned, and I know uh, you, John Salav, uh, those who follow the exploits of high school football would surely testify to the fact so they should be there. In fact, Tom Stobie said so. An earlier radio interview today, he couldn't believe it. He said somebody was sleeping at the switch. And I know who was sleeping at the switch. But anyway, the ball game's over. Lumen wins at 41 to nothing. Our post game brought to you by Pizza Please. There's a guy down there who makes pizza at Pizza Please. I might have mentioned him. 1131st Street. His name is Big Al. I never asked Al his last name because it's no consequence. The only thing I can tell you, he's a professional pizza maker is what he is. And this guy is something else. And if you have tried them, I know you go back, but if you haven't tried them, I hope you will soon. And that is, uh, well, whatever you're looking for there, if you want a pizza, when you name the size, they've got the right price. Plus, they have a brand new uh, product, which is about a month old, actually, with the Pizza Taco Grande, the large 16-inch taco pizza.
Spartan recruits James Moore from Sexton. What what are your personal goals for this ball game? To win, to help the team to win. That's the main thing right there. No no step thing for myself, just to go out and do the best I can for the team and do all I can for the team. You want to show George Pearl or something? I'm sure he'll be watching. Oh yeah, you know I'm gonna go out and do the best I can, and that should be enough, <laughs> hopefully. More tonight at 11. You probably wouldn't call these guys all-stars, but the Lions were hard at it. George has no less than 11 MSU recruits involved. In fact, George left the office this afternoon to observe the East and the West teams practicing in the stadium. It'll be an unusual game for East Lansing High School's Jack Carruthers. He'll play linebacker, but then he's headed for Central Michigan University, where he'll play wide receiver. Jack Carruthers thinks the switch in college, though, will be good for him. Definitely. I'm a little bit small to play the outside position a little bit, so and my speed's good, so I think I can benefit the team and myself from the outside position wide receiver. Here, though, you're playing defense. How does that help or hurt your preparation maybe for college? Uh, both. It's, it's, it makes you tougher, definitely, on the defensive side to get used to the hitting back into football. Mark tenth sale. Floor samples close out. Stadium Saturday afternoon. All four classes of schools will be represented, and among the young men from Class C will be Terry Hesbrook, who did about everything one athlete could do for the very successful program at Ithaca High School. It's one of the greatest experiences I've ever had as far as athletic-wise. It's a lot of fun so far. You know, of course, it just got started, but it's a lot of fun so far with a lot of exposure. The West Side has had uh, some trouble in, this, in these games. They've lost three of the four. Have the coaches uh, pressed that point upon you guys? No, they haven't yet, but uh, among the... Gang of Three's Company said we're going to go out and get this one and, you know, stuff like that, so. Well, it's, be a good game. it's coming up Saturday. It's available, so please go on out and help them out a little bit. Finally, a surprise. What have the coaches up there at CMU told you, uh, you know, about your career up there, about playing up there? What, what, the, what plans do they have for you? Well, that's why I chose Central Michigan. I was recruited by a lot of the bigger schools, but I chose Central Michigan so I could play earlier. And my chances look very good there. I'll be playing wide receiver there next year. Now, those all-stars over at Spartan Stadium are aiming at their college careers now, but high school seniors-to-be are already getting an introduction into... ...was a bona fide first-team prep All-American, and he'll be in the lineup this Saturday for the big all-star game in Spartan Stadium. TV 10 Steve Carmerson has a profile tonight of this future MSU star. One reason why some experts say Michigan State's recruiting class is one of the nation's best stands six foot two and weighs a solid 195 pounds. Running back John Miller. You were a running back in high school. I think you scored how many touchdowns last year? 32, something like that. And how many overall? 72. <laughs> Just how good a player is John Miller? Well, no less a publication than the Sporting News labels the Farmington Harrison product as one of the top 100 recruits in the country. And that's as a defensive back. They let me uh, make my own choice. was running back for DB, and, and I picked DB. I think uh, the defense is where it's at. It's where you win a ball game, lose a ball game. And, and uh, I can't wait to play some defense at Michigan State. We knew that he was going to be a defensive back in college, and we just decided he was such a great offensive player, we wanted the, the swan song. One more time, 
to uh, watch John run. Kasner coached against Miller's team and found there was no way to avoid him. You would try to set your formation strong one way and then run back away from the strength. And John would come from the free safety and just completely break down your attack. I understand that uh, September 14th, you're, you don't have any plans, right? <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, we'll have a, we'll have a plan schedule on that day. <laughs> that is State's home opener. Six for Saturday afternoon at Spartan Stadium. Tonight, we'd like you to meet offensive lineman John Kenoy from St. John's. Well, I'd like to be impressive and show that I've been working hard and not that they've made a mistake in recruiting me. And all the players here are good, so it's good competition to show that you're a good ball player. What about playing with all these great players? It's got to be a big thrill just to be uh, invited to a game like this. Yeah, it sure is. It's, been, it's an honor. Um, it's been a goal of mine to play in this game since a teammate of mine played in the first one and then the second player from my high school to play. Michael, we got that final now. Manual High School All-Star Game. Holland West Ottawa linebacker Matt Vanderbeek is one of the 11 MSU recruits in the game, and he agrees with us he needs to build up his 218-pound frame. Yeah, a little bit. I want to be about 230. Okay. How long do you think it's going to take to do that kind of thing? Might be a couple of years. Put on some good weight, yeah. One of the one of the strengths of any good linebacker, and I guess one of the, your strengths certainly is speed. Uh, how much do you think that would cut down in your speed if you add that much weight on? Hopefully none. <laughs> Bowling Green is the overwhelming favorite to win the Mid-American Conference football title this coming season. The pick comes from a vote of media people who cover the conference. Central Michigan is picked to finish second and Western Michigan sixth. Western plays at MSU September 28th. Bowling Green is still coached by Denny Stoltz, now in his ninth season. For us, for over 100 guys, you know, having an all-around good day. What's more important in this, uh, for this week coming up? Is it more important to have fun or is it more important to win the game? have fun and win the game <laughs> both tickets available dave is talking about a nice saturday if it stays like today it'd be well not wet but if it yeah. stays as cool as today you can take a sweater and a thermos of hot That's chocolate right. for football tonight at 11 we are going to talk to the most famous football game has been a dud at the box office and the fifth annual game is set for this saturday in spartan stadium and tv 10's mark wilson examines the problem this is where the trouble begins. 76,000 seats at Spartan Stadium and not anywhere near enough bodies to put in them for the high school football all-star game. It's been a problem that has raged on now for the entire five-year life of the game. And new director and former Spartan football coach Muddy Waters says he's not quite sure why this trouble still exists. Well, I don't know exactly, Mark, but I think, I think part of it is that uh, they may not know that much about the, the fact that the game is being held. Little publicity has been the factor. There hasn't been a sellout, even if you combine the attendance from the first four games. Last year, only about 8,000 watched as East faced West. So why would Muddy, director of the Cherry Bowl, take the job? Well, primarily because I believe in, in high school football. The ideals of educational football are, are very important, not only to the kids that play it, but to those who are involved in the program. As the kids from the East worked out today, you could see the intensity, but the dollar is still the bottom line, and that line is beginning to bottom out. Is there a possibility that this game would have to be moved, let's say to a Silver Dome, in the future? Uh, all those possibilities are there, Mark. Uh, we uh, certainly will have to do some uh, soul searching and uh, some evaluating. But the truth is, Muddy and everyone else would like to get the support they need to keep welcoming people back to Spartan Stadium every August. At MSU, Mark Wilson. He was hoping to be a very, very busy man for the West come Saturday. Honored to play here with all these good players and everything, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to throw the ball a little bit in the game. What's more important for you, to have fun or to win the game? Have fun, but... Uh, you know, you always want to win. You're having fun now, but once the game comes around, you want to win the game. Good head start on your college career, getting started a couple weeks early in, in terms of fall drills. Yep, uh, you get a little bit of football in you now. And, uh... He's not your typical football recruit. He really is something special. While at Farmington Harrison High School, he amassed better than 4,400 yards rushing, scored 72 touchdowns, and on defense, hauled in 20 interceptions. He was All-State three years, the top player in the state last season, and was named to the Parade All-America team. Yet, he takes little credit for his success. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's a great honor. I mean, I'm, I've, I'm honored by it. I mean, I, I love it. But, uh, you know, it's not just me. I mean, I couldn't do half the things that uh, I've done without the rest of the guys that have been on my team the last four years. And, you know, you can tell that up here. Uh, 
it's a, it's a lot different ball game up here just with these guys. You know, it's a lot tougher to run, and, and uh, they hit a lot harder. Being a high school All-American is something for Miller to cherish right now. But how about being a collegiate All-American sometime in the next four or five years? Oh, I wouldn't worry about that for the next three years anyway. Um, this year's going to be a real learning experience for me. I don't expect to get a lot of playing time. You know, maybe somewhere down the line, three, four years, we'll, we'll, look, at, we'll look at it then. At Michigan State, Ken Landau, New Center 6 Sports. Michael, they say he's the greatest athlete at Farmington Harrison. With one <laughs> exception, buddy. Well, well, he can, he <laughs> can still be. He can still be. I'm not going to admit anything. Oh, wait for his fans. Yeah, I know. I've got a lot of friends and family going to come over, and it should be a good time Saturday. What do you want to do in this ball game? Personally, what, what are your personal goals for the All-Star game? Well, I know I want to give 100 percent. No. Uh -oh. Monster. Jackson Lumen Christie's Tom Sullivan is one. We spoke with him last night. The other is Joe Malatinsky from Eastern High School. Here. Well, I'd, I'd just like to show to my coaches at Ferris State that they really got what they wanted. So. Is, is this a big stepping stone then for you? Is it a head start uh, on uh, fall drills? Oh, it sure is. Getting shape here and be all set. Coaches can know what, know what I'll be able to do after this. So it'll help me a lot. If you were to write your own headline for Sunday's paper a after Saturday's game, what would it be? Um, West beats East by 20 points. Hmm. That wouldn't be bad. We'll, we'll see. That, that would be a change, yeah. The uh, East is Detroit and Flint area, and the West is everybody They're working else. pretty hard for just a fun game. You know, it's interesting. A lot of people see it and say, my God, they're serious, aren't they? They are. It's not I just come are. out, stroll out, and have fun. They're playing serious football. Maybe impress a few scouts, too, huh? Maybe. Thanks, John. Sure. sure. players in the state showing off at Spartan Stadium to a pretty good crowd for a change. At first we thought there wasn't going to be a lot of people, but as it turns out they sold about 20,000 tickets or something. East versus West, in other words Detroit against the rest of the big glove, but it's all West today. First and goal at the nine, that's a touchdown. Tom Sullivan from Jackson Lumen Christie to Joe DeRocher of Traverse City. And folks, that's all the scoring today. 14-0, the West led at the time, just two TDs. Defense for the West made the difference. Incoming Spartan Andre Risen, great interception. He's one of 11 Spartans in the game, makes his second catch of the day on the defense. Risen will help MSU. Lansing Everett's Rodney Whittington also played well today, but the West beats the Bad Boys from Motown, 14-zip. Only their second win over the East in the five years of the game. Our Steve Carmerson got some reaction from a happy group of West players led by Andre Risen. Well, you know, I'm just out here, one of the, one of the team members, just one of the team members, giving 100% to win the game. The West has only won once in the last four games. How come? Uh, we know that. We've been talking about that all week, and we wanted to win this one bad. Uh, this year, we got some good receivers, and it's... Uh, you know, we're throwing the ball a lot, and that's working for us. This is just a good West team, I think. We, these guys got a lot of class here. And East teams have been having problems and stuff like that. And we got a lot of class, and I think that we've held together real well, and I think that's why we're winning. Two Spartans out there to put together your own team. You exactly, think? and some very, very talented ones. And some of them were winners, some of them were losers, but they were all very happy to be playing at Spartan Stadium. The Michigan High School Football Coaches Association held its fifth annual All-Star Game today at Spartan Stadium. The local players, 10 of them in all, took part on the winning team, and that was the West team today, as we take a look at action from the first quarter. Eastern High School's Joe Malatinsky here passes to a former rival, James Moore, for a 13-yard touchdown, puts the West up 7-0. Second quarter action, Tom Sullivan from Jackson Lumen Christie High School. He scrambles, he rolls over to his right, and he finds Joe DeRocher from Traverse City for a 9-yard touchdown, 14-0 West. We go later in the game where defense became the key for the West squad. Mark Stroya's pass here is picked off by Andre Risen. And Andre Risen, along with James Moore and uh, John Kenoy, were very happy players. Oh, yeah, a lot of fun, and uh, we won. So, hey, everything came to like I planned it to, and now it's time to get ready for the Big Ten. I'm very happy. Those guys have been talking big all week, and we just practiced hard, and we knew we could do it. What about playing here in Spartan Stadium? First of many games for you. That sure was, and it was a thrill. Come in with a start off with a win, so it's one in a row. The West definitely dominated the ball game with 407 yards. Stadium today, the numbers tell the story. Let's show it to you. Officially, 22,000. 289 for on hand for the high school all-star football game and here i thought no one would go like the past four years well it was a great game as well especially for fans of the west side they win it 14 nothing as our steve carmison explains 
Last year, roughly 5,000 people were on hand. This year, nearly 23,000 sat in the sun, cheering people like future Spartan Andre Risen, who pilfered two interceptions. It's one way to finish it, you know. I'm, I'm enjoying it so far, because Woods haven't won in three years. Is it hot enough for you? Oh, it's hot. <laughs> now, you want it hotter, don't you? A little bit. <laughs> After another Spartan to be, Sexton's James Moore scored on a pass. Joe DeRocher of Traverse City Senior High took this toss from Jackson Lumen Christie's Tom Sullivan. 14 0 West. Easy pickings, says DeRocher. Well, I'm quite surprised. I've played against better guys in my high school than some of the D backs that I'm going against back there. So I'm really surprised. It's kind of easy out there. Coaches spread out playing time, so no players really dominated. Highly touted MSU recruit John Miller, a future defensive back, gained just 20 yards. Fellow MSU recruit Maurice Ware fooled everybody in this play. He grabbed four passes. And check out Everett's Rodney Whittington, who really does run bigger than he is. Oh, yeah, this is a very good competition. It's, uh, you know, great to play in front of all these people and all these great players. Pack on the U.S. military. TV 10 Sports. Second win now for the West over the East. Lions made a move.